split that. Okay, we're back. Oh, hey guys. Whoops. Hello there. Kev killed Xsplit. I killed Xsplit, so we're not going to be doing production anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we learned that lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs it? Um, so anyway, yeah, Xsplit crashed. Anyway, so I was having a lot of issues with uh, the, the bracket. Like, if you put your cursor over the first, like the top team, it blocks the second team. So you can't scroll your cursor down because you just go over, like, the block of stats. Uh, that was one issue. And then the whole entire bottom, like, two or three teams, like, their their stats just go off the page. and You can't even read it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Can I even make a bracket or do any of that? Because I don't You should. Really, I don't really yeah, care. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta but... at least get a portrait. Yeah, yeah you get the Asmodan oh, you get portrait. Yeah, an Asmodan portrait, yeah. How's yeah. it different than the normal Asmodan portrait? I don't know, actually. It's like holding a ball of fire. He's, like, about to throw it at you. Well, what's Yo. the normal Asmodan portrait look like? It's just Checking. his face. Oh. Yeah, I think it's then, just his face. This one. Well, then like... I will do it because I suddenly care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably why I'm gonna do it. Uh, so, it Kev. Yeah. Uh, we've been challenged to put a flip bet on yeah. the best bracket. So... All right. All right. Let's do it, man. Flip bet. Down. Going hey, down. No, nope, other way. Other way. Other I way. To... I can't see. I have no. Oh way yeah, yet. right. Sorry. Can I be in on this? I haven't made my bracket yet. All right, flip bet. So now it's now it's a, a three way flip bet. <laughs> three way flip bet. Who has the best bracket? They go in the mail. If you lose. In the mail? mail, uh, mail why don't you just like Venmo or something? And they go the in my money. belly if I win. Well, <laughs> yeah. That's where flips go. <laughs> that is what you do with flips, Jared. Thanks. All right, flips bet set. So, um, guys, let's let's talk about Heroes of the yeah, Dorm. Apparently there's uh, there's quite a quite a thing that's happened with Heroes of the Dorm. Um, Apparently it's one of the worst run ter- events I have ever heard of in yeah. admining history. I see uh-huh. a lot of the people complaining on Reddit. Sure. They're just like... It, so let's open up that topic. Too, like... Let's open up that topic. The Swiss groups um, were not actually Swiss groups. Uh, does anybody have a really formal explanation? Uh, I know there Swiss was a couple... Works? Huh? Of how Swiss works or just what happened in general? Well, let's go... Let's, go let's, let's introduce our viewers to Swiss groups, and then we'll talk about how this uh, failed. Okay, so Swiss do. groups, as I understand it, you have a, an even number of players in a pool. Let's say you have ten. Uh, the first round is just going to be random seeding, who plays who, and then, then it's played by record. So of all the teams that won, they play against the winners. And then whoever has 2-0 and record, they play the other 2-0 and team until you have the best team moving forward. And so I, th- I think yeah. that they, did they, I don't know if they play through until it's a complete round robin, but they'll, they'll get to the point where they figure out how many people they need to, to weed out, and then they move from there. The problem is when you have a lot of teams that don't show up, and then they need to do tiebreakers based on records. And if you've played a lot of teams already, let's say you're you're ten and zero, and you actually played all of your matches, and you get a loss, you're you're now ten and one. So you have a certain percentage, you know, like eighty nine percent or whatever. That's your that's your win rate. If you got a lot of buys because teams didn't show up, well, let's say you only get five matches, even though you're you're still quote unquote ten and zero, but they don't count those matches towards your tiebreaker. So you're really five and zero, oh, and if you suffer a loss, now you're looking at, you know, a seventy percent win rate, but you only have the same amount of losses. That runs into a lot of problems in terms of tie breaking. That's completely unfair for the teams that happen to go up against other teams that didn't show up. Like, why should yeah. they be penalized for that? Yeah, and that, no that, reason. That it's beyond their control. A huge amount of problems. Right, it, it's it's completely out of their control, and it just really messed up the whole tiebreaker situation. There were a lot of teams that were like, we were pretty sure we were going to advance because we beat X number of teams, but then we lost because, you know, some other teams went through that had bra- uh, buys or whatever, and just we saw a ton of threads. There were just people were like, what happened? We didn't. We we contacted admins and they gave us really bad responses, and it was a mess. Just, just from that perspective, there's a lot of other problems as well. Yes, there's a lot of problems. So. That's yeah, that's pretty bad. Like, you lost, and it's like comp- like there was nothing in that team's control of why they lost. Like, mm-hmm. it's just it's compl- It's literally the like one of the most unfair losings that you could have. It just it's terribly designed format. Um, and there were a lot of threads. There were there was a lot of complaints. One of the Reddit threads got like. 300 upvotes, which is pretty insane for the subreddit. Oh, it had more than that. I think I think it had about five, six hundred upvotes. It was... Oh yeah, this one, this one is 624 upvote possible. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. a lot. And that's that a, is a lot. how many people are even in that subreddit. So like, it's getting a lot of 60k. 
Yeah. In the, oh, oh, I thought this was in just the Heroes of the Dorm subreddit. I was like, okay. No, 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 no this is our subreddit. Okay. Our subreddit. Yeah, Still, in the main yeah, subreddit. Well, I mean, it became a huge... It's getting exposure because it's a problem. It is. <laughs> I mean, it's a yeah. huge problem for pretty much everything that... You know, the Heroes of the Dorm is supposed to be, like, the pinnacle get people into right. uh, Heroes of the Storm. And yeah. especially because it's going to be going all the way up to ESPN and all that, it's like you're just going to get a lot of salt coming in behind this because there's going to be a lot of people who are saying, like, I, we should have been getting broadcasted right now. We should have been in this situation. We should have been, etc. Uh, yeah. And they're not. So It's, it's also possible that the tournament organizers could have foreseen this because one of the things they gave just for signing up was beta access mm -hmm. so you know oh, yeah. hundreds of right. people are just like oh free beta why not so they just like say hey who else wants a beta and they like all sign up and like then just don't show to anything and play the game maybe twice and they're like okay it's fun and then they don't even try anymore and like yeah. they could have anticipated that happening and they should have had a backup plan for if they, no if they still wanted to do the the free beta giveaway part of it they should have had a previous check-in like the week before, right? So oh, it's totally. like, okay, you sign up for the event a month, one month prior to the first round. A week before, you have to check in with your team. If you don't want to check in, well, you still have beta access, whatever, you win, that's fine. But then you don't have all of these no-shows that are, you know, the next week's like a huge cluster F, and it's like, okay, this is, this is a problem, right? So uh, that, that just is a logistical nightmare. And then there were a lot of website issues, as I understand it. Like the website was just very faulty, and it caused a lot of delays in terms of the rounds. People were expecting yeah. to only play on Saturday. Things got delayed till Sunday and then beyond. Like people had to play the next weekend on Easter weekend. And you got to remember, this, these are college kids. Like they're going home for Easter weekend. It's like probably one of the larger weekends that college kids go home to visit their families. And now they have to make some choice, like to sacrifice well, what do they do, et cetera, or just like not play. That was a problem. There was also, we didn't talk about it, but with the uh, Swiss format stuff, yeah. um, it was, there was actually a rule. They, they changed the rule mid tournament. There's screen caps oh, yeah. of it being where it was the morning of, and then how they changed the rule towards halfway through the wow. tournament. Like after games had already been played, yeah. it, 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 admins were telling people they would play at certain times, and then suddenly they're ten minutes late to their match when it's you know an hour like before they're supposed to show up. Like it was, it's just one of the like honestly, honestly one of the like worst run qualifier events I've ever. Yeah. Now we should. Yeah, we I should, saw um, complain. I saw should complain clarify. about that. All right, hold on. Yeah, hold that. Hold that thought real quick. Um, we should clarify that it is Tespa that is yes. handling the qualifier, not yeah. Blizzard themselves. Like they contracted out to yep. Tespa. So, just keep that in mind. It's not entirely Blizzard's fault. Yes, they did hire Tespa to do it, but um, Tespa is the one that took command of managing that. All right, go ahead, Furiousy. Uh, I was going to say that you know when I was going through the uh, post on the Reddit or one of the many posts, there was someone uh, complaining that a team no showed and. Uh, it's like if you don't show up for your match in 20 minutes or something, you know, the other team or you lose or something like that. And they contacted the admin and then somewhere else it says they have 30 minutes to dispute that. And then so the team like showed up after the 20 minutes and said, oh, no, it's 30 minutes, not 20. And the admin got confused about what the contesting time was versus what the late time was. So it was like they were very clearly not there. So the rules are like ambiguous in yeah, that yeah. sense, too. And that's yeah. the opposite of what rules should be, right? Yeah. <laughs> they should be there to solve problems, not create more. Yeah. <laughs> and this goes yeah, back I'm, to like faulty admining. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty uh, careful when it comes to rules. Probably way more than I should be. And I mean, you know a little bit about that, Zoya. Like before matches, I'm just like, all right, just in case, like, yeah. what are we doing? Uh, yeah, and yeah. that's that's one thing that I'm, you know, especially as a new tournament organizer, I've run into a lot of issues with people being like, hey, your rules, they uh, they kind of suck. <laughs> I've, had, <laughs> I've had Cloud9 come in on Town Hall Heroes and say it, and I've had other people like complain about it. It's, it, is, it is an important thing to, to really consider. Sometimes, though, I mean, especially because, if I remember correctly, this is like Tespa's first, like, group type of uh, tournament that they're running. I think they've run... They've run a lot of StarCraft stuff, and they've run a lot of Hearthstone stuff. I don't think they've ever run, like, Teams-type games. Okay, yeah. Um, I'm not sure about that, You though. might be right on that. That sounds about right. But, uh, it's... Yeah, it's 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 really... The other thing I have to... I have to hand it out to them is that, you know, they're running an 800-team tour tournament. So, yeah, it's, it's it's huge. And, uh, honestly, That's... looking... looking, It's not... It's not an excuse. It's not no, an no, excuse. No, 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 sorry. I'll, I'm, I'm going to say... I'm gonna say Looking at the, their initial problem of where the website went down, I immediately put a... Sorry, you just froze. Um, I immediately yeah. put in my Evernotes for running tournaments, always have... Yeah, you're still frozen. 
No, oh, you're good. Always you have. Go. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks for the sham sham. Great. Awesome. <laughs> um, I, I I put in my Evernote for running tournaments. I was like, always have a backup for your brackets. Like photo, like you know, screenshot them. Do whatever you need to do, but like make sure that you have some sort of backup for your brackets because that's exactly what happened day one. They didn't have a way to to distribute those brackets because their website went down. You bring up uh, some like you said, eight hundred teams, right? Mm -hmm. What's the prize pool again? It's like hundred thousand dollars towards student loans or something, something crazy like that. Uh, four hundred fifty thousand dollars. Four hundred fifty thousand, yeah, even it's more lot. money. It's an insane yeah. amount of money. Yeah. How much hype has Blizzard and Tespa been generating for this tournament? We have a round of sixty four starting this weekend. I haven't seen anything. I haven't yeah. seen anything. There's nothing. I, I know that the there's gonna be community casters uh, covering some matches. But barely, like, two sets each, and that's barely it. Like, this is such a huge... Like, when, remember when we first talked about it, how hyped we were about it? Compare that hype till now. I don't know. I haven't seen any streams. I haven't seen Blizzard hyping it up. I haven't seen nobody hyping it up. It's like they were like, we're going to throw all this money at it, kind of half ass get to the point where we're at ESPN, and then we'll try hard. But all we got to do is make it to ESPN, guys, and then we're good. That's, like, yes. the whole feeling I'm getting. It's just... They were like, let's make it get to this point, and then we have ESPN. That's awesome. But what about and, the rest of this stuff? Yeah, absolutely. And we are the people who are always looking. Like, you know, I'm on the Reddit every day. I'm looking through the news on Battle.net every day. Like, if we yeah. don't know about it, then people just getting to the game or people that haven't played the game are going to have absolutely no idea. And that just seems like a huge missed opportunity. Yeah, I agree. That is that is actually a really good point. I mean, I think it would have been pretty. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna assume how their operations work, but I think it would have been an awesome maneuver if they were able to find a way to get community casters to cast all these games that happened this past week. I would have casted everything. I, I would, would have casted, casted everything. As much yeah, as I possibly that's could. True. Um, I think that would have been a great move, but maybe at the same time they didn't want to have to develop assets and all that stuff for casters to use. But <sighs> there, I mean, there's just been no hype at all leading up to like. We have the hype of the ESPN stuff, the stuff that uh, you know Jake's working on and stuff like the uh, uh, the actual main broadcast with Blizzard. I think it's for the round of sixteen on. Mm -hmm. uh, but what about all this other Wait, stuff? Wait, no, it's, they, not, they, it's not this weekend. Have, I think. I think it's I think Sunday. This this stuff. Sunday they're starting the first set of casts, but it's yeah. not for ESPN stuff. I think that's yeah. is that just round of four on? Or is I think ESPN just round of four. Yeah, I think ESPN is okay. the, only the finals. Um. The only, way, the only thing I've seen out of Blizzard is the, the video that they released uh, talking about like the bracket and stuff, like how to submit your own community brackets. But other than that, I don't think they've really released anything. Yeah. I mean, the bracket generated some hype, but even then, like yeah. I, the only reason I saw it was because I saw a tweet from uh, b -b 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 Trixler. No, yeah. ask Jossie. And, ask, and that's ask just Joshi. the round of 64, though. What about all the matches before then that could have been hyped up? Yeah, they, yeah they 10 rounds of Swiss, right? The 10 rounds of Swiss, that's a lot of games lot of that games. could have been covered. <laughs> a yeah. lot of and, games. Like, you don't even do much. Like, what uh, Team Liquid has always done with their cups is they encourage the players to stream their matches with a delay. Mm -hmm. Blizzard could have easily been like, you know, stream your matches. We'll give you, like, a shout-out on Twitter or, or try to get you shout-outs on Twitter or, you know, maybe we'll make a mega thread on Reddit or something. Let's just, like, they, there could have been so much more hype built up to this point. And yeah. right now, going into the Heroes of the Dorm, I, I feel no hype. I'm like, oh, it's happening. I might not even watch the games. I'll probably watch the round of four, and that's it. Yeah, we don't yeah. know who's on the teams. They haven't done anything to build those stories up. We know, personally, we've, like, you know, some of the people in the community have, like, looked through the actual rosters to see if there's been previous competitive players. The only ones that I'm aware of are Suppy and Kawhi Rice, right? So, other than those two teams, Calber. which... Yeah, those two those two teams are playing in round of eight. But other than that, yeah. I don't know anything about the other teams. There's there's I mean I've, I've bumped into people playing on ladder or whatever, but other than that, it's there's no story up to this point. You're right. Yeah. You're right, Jared. It's, yeah. it's probably I, I literally feel nothing right now for Heroes of the Dorm, and that's not yeah. good. It's four hundred fifty thousand dollars, and was it actually eight hundred teams signed up? I, I saw I saw the number eight hundred. Who knows if that's actually accurate? But it was even if it's over like two hundred teams signed up, yeah. that is an insane that's number bigger to hype than, up. That's that's yeah. bigger than any tournament that has ever existed for heroes so far. That is By insane. Far. By that's far. so cool. And there's no I don't know. There's like no hype for this event right now at mm. all. Yeah, like, I would have liked to watch the, the teams channel. that are like eight and zero or nine and zero in the Swiss round. Like yeah. out of even if it's only 200 teams, but if it's 800 teams, like out of all those teams, how many people they played, and like if they were eight and zero, like 
they're probably pretty good. They may be coming from another MOBA. Maybe they see something that you know we haven't even thought of. Like, yeah, <laughs> like they're obviously not bad if they won eight or nine games in a row against other people that are now you know six and zero, seven and zero, eight and zero. Right. Yeah, even, totally be interesting. Even if you just took the, the sixty four teams that are in the final bracket now and just be like, hey, can you guys send us the replay packs for your run and just like release that publicly? Yep. And had community casters cover those games. Like, there's so much yeah. more that could have been easily done. They don't even have to do anything. Let the because, like, all three of us just said, we would have casted this stuff, yeah. hands down. There's like, a lot. There's a lot of community casters too. They're looking for content to, to yeah, cast. There's, et there's so, there's so like, many casters. That's, that's why I released Titan Arena replays every yeah, single time. It's just because there's so many people who could get into this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Blizzard, we're just going to put this notification out there right there, or right now. If you need some additional casters for this weekend, I know a couple of guys. <laughs> I know a lot of guys. There's so many people that will just load up to cast, even just the round of 64 and round of 32. There's yeah. so many people that will just jump on board to cast that. All yeah, right. Absolutely. Let's, uh, speaking of the fact that we just kind of went over rules, let's talk about something that's going to change a lot of rules for a lot of tournaments coming up. Pause has just been implemented Ooh. today. Love pause. It, for custom, it's good for custom games. For custom, custom games, games only, yes. For custom games, games only. Um, so, yeah, now when you're in a custom game, you have a pause and break key. Oh, wait, you have to just pause. You have to hit the key itself. Yep. Apparently, it's not an actual Pause, pause break, yes. Pause break key. Um, <laughs> yep. Can that be caused by uh, uh, players or referees at any time yep. during a game? I have to rewrite rules before Titan Arena 3. Uh, this yeah. is a good problem. Let's, let's go down the line. Kubi, <laughs> what are you thinking? Yes. Uh, I like this. We've already seen a lot of tournament games get ruined because someone disconnects and there's like no easy way to get around that. Like, do we not aggress them? What do we do? Uther bots OP, all this <laughs> stuff, right? So it's like, what are, you know, it'd be, it's so nice to have that option now to pause, wait for the person to reconnect. Even we'll, we'll see things where it's like this person has restored their connection. There's still like a five minute break before they can catch up in the, you know, like the supposed replay or however it loads it through before they can get back into the game. So it's like at the very least like we see them like restore the connection we could pause or until they get their things sorted out. You get a power outage that stays, you know, then there's nothing you can do about that obviously. But at least if you see that they've restored the connection you can pause and that's a huge step. Yeah, it's like it, it's been there's been so many ridiculous scenarios where someone will DC, a team will get a kill and then that team will say sorry. And like they're all automatically like put on a defensive. So like we've had it, it's happened to so many teams. It's happened to Tempest Storm. It's happened to two. Yeah. It's happened to so many teams where a yeah. DC happens, someone's killed, and then the team that like both parties just look guilty and they don't know what to do. And yeah, it, no one looks so good awkward. in that situation, right? It, it, it's no one's fault. There's no one. It's no one's fault at all. Like and if there even if there's not a kill, if there's just a DC, like right now the kind of thing that NA scene doing is like, well, we just respect each other and soak for like five minutes. You don't really do other any other thing right now, but that's terrible. Yeah, that's awful. That's yeah, terrible. That's so this is act. This is really good. Um, it, it's really impactful. The, the funny thing is, each player gets three pauses in the game. So like we uh, in our first scrim versus male scrim earlier today, it was like the first two and a half minutes of the game were all the players spamming pause, which <laughs> was was neat. Um, but it, it's 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 good to have the feature. It's definitely a long time coming. Brendan. Uh, I am so excited about pause. Uh, that was like, I, I'm kind of surprised it took so long. I mean, I guess alpha, you know, it's like super early that it came out, but the game's been somewhat publicy for about a year now. Um, but like, I'm so 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 excited. Uh, you know, just like Jared said, like when a di disconnect happens in a match, it's the most awkward thing in the world because, I mean, there's two reasons it's bad. One is if the bot is right in the middle of your team, like. You can ignore it, but sometimes like it's actually giving you trouble. Like you know, like is this bot about to cast? Uh, I forget what game it was. There was the bot that landed the four man Twilight Dream or something that like silenced everybody, uh, <laughs> and everyone's like, "Oh my god, the Malfurion bot!" And it's just like, so are we just gonna let this bot like walk around? Um, the other thing is like you're disconnected for a good five ten seconds before it actually lets everybody know. So sometimes you know it looks like someone's just out of position. They're not looking in the right spot and you kill them and then it's like that player's left the game and you're like oh man they were disconnected um and that i guess might still happen hopefully you know they'll be able to update that sooner or something um but i i'm so excited that there's a pause now like being able to pause for disconnect it, it can't be bad like it 
so, so, so good. And it's something that's existed in other games for a long time now. And I'm really happy to see that Heroes caught up. Yeah. To, it to address that as well. one point um, that you said about the, the people disconnecting, someone else in the team could be like, you know, if you say it over comms, I just disconnected, someone pause for me. Like yes, that, that is, that's That's true. a potential solution for that. Yeah, absolutely. So let's bring up the elephant in the room because they were talking about this in one of the Skype chats. Tactical pausing. Mm, yeah, that's and a pause very... limits. Interesting. Um, so to discuss, uh, and I saw to, someone to in explain, the chat. Yeah, to, ex- to like explain. Twenty minute pauses, great. Yeah. To good. explain, to explain that is uh, when you're running an online tournament, there's the possibility that somebody's going to use a pause to hopefully lag out the delay that'll be on a stream. So say I'm running on a three minute delay for Titan Arena, or you know ESL is running on a five minute delay. I think you guys sometimes run on, or is it three? I don't know. Anyway. It's always three. It's always three? Okay. So ESL runs on a three-minute delay. Somebody pauses the game, waits three minutes. Now they get to see what heroics are up, what heroics are down, what the current positions of everybody uh, are, and then they unpause. They're like, oh, look, my keyboard's working again. And uh, they get to know exactly where the enemy is. Um, what do you guys think about solutions to that problem? Or possibly just, you know, what are you, what are you guys thinking in general about it? Do you think we need to increase delays to, like, five minutes and only have three minutes allowed for a pause? Even then, though, it doesn't really help that much, does it? I don't think... Yeah, it does. <sighs> Jeez, that's... Uh, maybe, maybe you reserve that only for disconnects? I don't know. It's a hard, it's a hard thing to tackle unless there's... Yeah, pauses should only be for disconnects. Yeah, pauses should only be for disconnects. I think the long pauses should only be for disconnects. Like, uh, if you look at sports, you can get, like, a 30-second timeout or something. And I think, you know, maybe you could say, okay, a team, like, you get two or three timeouts, 30 seconds, no more. Um... But if there's like a disconnect, then I guess you could say, you know, take five minutes and I guess you could like unplug your router and be like, is there a up? Oh, I don't know. Hold on. Let me like disconnect real quick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like, I guess we just have to trust players not to do that. I mean, I think everyone's pretty legit. Uh, and everyone that I know in the competitive scene uh, At least for now, stays but you never yeah. know, man. There's no way around that, though. There's never, you could increase the delay, but people who are going to cheat are going to cheat. Yeah. You just got to play better. I feel like that's a bad mentality. Even still, you're running the risk of like pulling your router. <laughs> you're going to you're going to suffer kills probably. Like that's just true. do just doing that in itself like, "Oh, I need to know this bit of information. Let me unplug, sacrifice basically my life <laughs> to, to, to just to get this small piece of information. It probably isn't worth it." Even then, it depends though. on how they position themselves. Maybe it's always an opportunity to abuse. If a team is consistently DCing, yeah, like, we'll know. We'll know. There's, I don't think there's any way to stop the one time, like, oh, there's $5,000 on the line, let's DC and see the APOX timing or where they are at right now, you know, it's, yeah. uh, there's, I don't think there's really a way to avoid that. I mean, well, I just said, if you run, like, a five-minute delay and you make pauses only up to three minutes, wouldn't yeah. they? Yeah, I think you just yeah. set the... Because then the you, they don't, the they'd still be two minutes behind. But even set. then, though, DC, reconnect still take, like, if it's a 20-minute game... Long. If, if you're like if you're like in a Garden of Terror game where you're 24 minutes in and someone DCs, the time it takes to reconnect is longer than three minutes. Even if that person gets start, even if it's just a, the client crashes, mm. it takes longer than three minutes at that point to get caught up. One thing that might be good is uh, a lot of time what happens in reconnecting is it's like the server is three seconds ahead, server is five seconds ahead, and then you're yeah. just stuck within a few seconds forever. Yeah. And maybe if it's not still progressing, it won't get stuck there, and Definitely. reconnects maybe faster. I hope that's the case. I guess we'll see. Yeah, we'll have to see. Uh, next three days. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the repeat offenders I think will always be, you know, I think they'll be easy to pick out, but, you know, just say there's like a huge, huge game and all of a sudden that's pulled into question. It's just going to dr- uh, drum up a lot of drama, and that's what I'm kind of worried about, especially when we were talking about that in the Skype group. Um, you mm. know, God forbid that happens like game five of uh, some major ESL or something tournament. It would have to be, like, a bizarre timing for a... Like, not bizarre timing, but, like, a very, like, pre-engaged timing yeah. for them to pause it. it. It would have to be, like, beautifully executed on the team's part for it to be valuable. Because if you're just to pause at any point and be like, oh, they've got two people doing those nights over there, but they're halfway done. There's probably nothing we can do to deny it, even if they were trying to cheat that way. Like... It, it, the odds of them getting something that valuable out of a pause is pretty low. Yeah, and if it's them gathering information that they shouldn't have, there's also that factor where it's like, how did they know this? They had no vision over there. 
you but know, and then then things like, start looking fishy, right? Yeah, if a team I wouldn't goes even like, that. like yeah. if it could be seen as fishy, I'd be like, don't pause now, please. Like, people yeah. are just gonna accuse us of stuff. It's not worth like the tiny little exactly. bit of information. And the good teams know what's going on anyway. Like, we know when a you know when a team's yeah. doing a boss right now. We know when yeah. like you you know where things are going. So like, from getting like a vision standpoint, like the only thing that you could really gain out of it, I guess, is timings on heroics. And people are getting to the point where they like Apoc's gonna be up soon. Yeah. It's... One problem, or if uh, teams are allowed to just do a tactical pause, is um, if they just win a team fight and they're just like, all right, pause. Like, let's take 10 seconds. What are the keep health set? Like, which lane do we pressure right now? Should we take a boss? That's going to give some teams that are less familiar with that an edge that they normally wouldn't have. Yeah. And that could be a problem. Because that's a big part of Heroes is knowing once you win a team fight, what's their respawn timer? What can we take? Like, that's a major part of the late game. How good handle how well your team can handle that, mm. and to, and you know what to discuss with the team about. And just in general, it may not even be after that particular point. But if there's like an argument, and it's just like two people are really going at it about something. It's like, all right, pause it. Like let's settle this right now. Like yeah, that's that's something to consider. Well, mm -hmm. an interesting thing that I think LCS tackled with that was that they said that there's no you're not allowed to talk communications at all when there's a pause, uh, at least during the finals. That's I remember, right. but there was also that huge problem with. Um, you know, we were saying that it does, you know, everybody seems trustworthy, but I think it was LCS season three when they were in that massive stage and just one of the team members of one of the teams, like there was a huge pause in the beginning at level one, right before level one team fight. And this one guy just does this and just looks up because they had one of the, the screens in plain view. It's, no bueno. It's, you know, pausing no bueno. brings in a lot of, it, it's. I'm glad that it's here, but I just I wanted to bring up a couple of these these points that just there are some things that pausing yeah. will also cause a crea uh, create an issue with. It's it's good that you said that though. Overall, this is like ninety five percent. Oh, ninety five percent at least. <laughs> yeah. At least yeah. ninety five. We've been asking for this for a long time. It's we're so glad to have it. Yeah, there's some problems with it, but like compared to just people DCing and games being flat out ruined, like it's better than that. So uh, I would take it every time. Does anybody else want to think that Blizzard's only implementing oh. this because Heroes of the Dorm is coming in? Oh, I thought he was about to pun. All yeah. right, because they don't <laughs> want to go into like ESPN and be like, "Well, we have no pause feature, so uh, Utherbot's yeah, going to take it." Absolutely, away. I'm sure it at least you know puts some pressure on like the UI team or the whoever would implement that. Yeah. To yeah, I remember back in BlizzCon, Dustin Browder was like, oh god, I hope this doesn't crash, like, we'll be so screwed. It's actually yeah. really yeah. funny you mentioned that. Uh, there was one moment during BlizzCon where I think Cloud9 went all backstage, grabbed a whole bunch of waters, and walked back out on stage be between games, I think. And I'm sitting there, like, because I'm a host, I have to sit, like, right behind the stage, I'm sitting there, and I was like, holy crap, what if one of them drops water all over everything, and, like, their computer just DCs? I was yeah. like... Right. Oh, <laughs> yeah. awkward. Yeah. yeah, it could be bad, but that's good. Well, I guess on the topic of patch, there's some other changes that they've made. They fixed Rainer. Yep, they fixed Rainer. He's uh, it's fun to play now. I used <laughs> to love playing Rainer, and now like without being able to like triple stun reset, it was just didn't have the same impact. But now he's good again. Yes, yeah, he's bullseye. good again. Yes. Bullseye talent now proper, appropriately stunts and increases the damage taken by the first enemy struck by penetrating round as well as Rainer's confident aim talent now appropriately reduces penetrating rounds cooldown upon striking an enemy hero. So those are some two really big changes for him. Um, Battlegrounds uh, changes. Everybody will be happy if you've ever run into you mad I bet on, on a team. <laughs> Uh, player-controlled garden terrors can no longer place a plant terror overgrowth within a allied ha a hall of storms, which is because the overgrowth is considered as a unit. Putting in the hall of storms would mean that it would get a whole bunch of health because that's you know that's where you back to the hall of storms. Yeah. So the overgrowth would never fall away. It counts as a human. Uh, it counts as a body. So people would be able to throw down three of them and block their team inside the hall of storms. Yeah, really? and if you hearth back, yeah. you can't. And That's if you hard back, you can't get back. You can't leave. Yeah, you lose the game. And on on top <laughs> of that, uh, you are non-active for like a certain amount of time, so you get AFK, Ooh. and then you get Ooh. into the bad brackets <laughs> too, and you just get. So not only are you screwed that game, but like for the next five games, you have long queues and awful toxic people. That's hilarious. 
It was. Uh, <laughs> It was. I'm not even fun. mad about that. That's fuck. That's that's hilarious. <laughs> that's fun, right? That's what you're that's saying, fun. right? That's, that's fun. fun. That's, that's a fun <laughs> way to play that's video games. That's fun. <laughs> but yeah, so they got some really nice patches out here today, guys. So of course, go check out Heroes of Storm once we're done with Town Hall Heroes. And there's just a couple other just smaller bug fixes I think they they threw in there. Yeah, the dismounting one for the Rhaegar. Yeah, yeah, the dismounting of Rhaegar, it's, it's, it's a pretty I've good never one. actually seen that happen, though. I hadn't personally witnessed like it. Like, the but... first day we were playing, he was like, did I just dismount that Rhaegar? Maybe he just canceled it, and then we were playing Rhaegar, and he's like, no, that definitely took me out of wolf form. It was super awkward. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, next topic. ESL Season 2 relegations have completed, and shots and bullets reloaded? Right. <laughs> yes. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Trying to remember their new name. Uh, formerly Lunatic Gaming has moved on into the ESL majors. Uh, we have the rest of the teams. Does uh, I don't have the link available, but do I have it. Shot Uno bullets. momento. Goat Gaming and Rising Taquitos. Link Boom. right there. Boom. Damn. No, that's not it. Boom. Okay. <laughs> well, I can't check that's, Skype anyway. That's the link. rules. You can just uh. Right there. <laughs> I still can't check Skype. Anyway, cool. So uh, first let's matches just... start tomorrow. Yeah, first matches start tomorrow. Yes, yeah, they, they were supposed to start Tuesday, yeah. but there was delays, so all four matches are being played tomorrow. Yeah, everyone's fine tomorrow. Um, ironically enough, I believe both our set and two arc set won't be played live on stream. They'll be cast I was from just replays. Just about to ask about that. Oh, it's from replay. Okay. Yeah. I believe they're getting cast from replays. Yeah, it should um, be two two games will be cast as normal Thursday or tomorrow night, and then I think it will be probably same time, eight PM Eastern will be casted for from replays um, for the two other matches. So, so uh, a bit unfortunate. There was like a lot of website problems that, that had caused that. So just you needed know, to just shove it out for, for a day. Well, I guess my question is, Kubi, is it just gonna be you and yourself or is Jake uh, going to be yeah, able to get we, on? We have to get that sorted out with Jake as to, to whether or not he can get to a computer to cast, and then I'm going to have to be on his computer. And it's it's It'll be interesting. <laughs> That's all I can say. That's if you need though. a co-caster. <laughs> uh, we'll to, I don't know this pose I'm doing. Yeah, but you can a, ask me your like a Greek. It's the co-caster pose. It's a, yeah, it's a co-caster pose. That's exactly how co-casters should be. So, uh, t TBD? <laughs> so okay. what's going to happen um, with that? I realize it is tomorrow. So this is a topic we haven't talked about in a while. Or I guess we never actually talked about this on the show, and it's not really a b big deal. It's, it's something we talked about in StarCraft 2 when, when GSL first became a thing compared to Brood War. When you were a champion in Brood War, you were a champion for several months. You, you were the OSL champion. You were, mm -hmm. you were that guy. In StarCraft 2, GSL came along. It was season followed by season followed by season. There was like five or six winners a year. And that the if you won the GSL, you were the best at the time, mm. you would lose that title two months later. That's kind of the same thing we're doing. Like it, it, This is just you know food for thought. ESL season 2 starting right now. Season 1 just ended. So 10 weeks from now, we're going to have a new... Right, right now, Maelstrom is the ESL season 1 champion. There are, with that title, the best team in North America. If they don't win season two, they lose that amazing title. Yeah. Because the season's starting so fast. Is this a short? problem? Should the league, should ESL be like, uh, like lengthening the time between the league to start, or is this okay? I think it's that's okay. Uh, maybe that's just. I mean, I guess it absolutely is just personal preference. But I think it's. Um, I think it's good. Like the scene is still early, or was still early in it. Uh, it gives new people. A chance to get seen. What feels a little bit awkward is that this is the highest level tournament. Yeah. It's not like an annual thing. You're not like the 2015 champion, the 2016 champion. You're the season one, which is like April 28th champion. <laughs> Jake got a sub something. when he's not even here. <laughs> but you know, that's, that, that is a good point. It's it's a very Hype. specific time frame, I guess. So, um, but yeah, it, it, you're right. The game is young, right? Yeah. In, and that, that might be a, a big factor. Maybe things will be spaced out. I'm sure they will be spaced out more as like the, the tournament level es uh, escalates. Yeah. Well, so that's actually an issue that I had with the WCS format, which that uh, it's like kind of like every two months, I think. There's like another WCS, and then there's three or four of those before the WCS finals. I don't like that formula because it just like it, it, it felt like it was like every other. Yeah, it felt just so often. It was like, oh wow, another set of WCS finals again. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. that's why I, I 
That's why I would rather it be a longer format. I, I somewhat prefer the LCS format just because it drives so much hype throughout that three quarters of the year that it takes to get to the finals. It's just like, whoa, this is yeah. it. This is the these are the finals. Um, L- WCS doesn't really have that, and I, I feel yeah. like it kind of kills a lot of the the storylines that could potentially exist. Yeah, I think the main yeah, problem that's a good is. Point. Uh, fiercely said it. This is this is the best we've got right now. Like, every, all all the teams, if they were to say, "What do you want to win?" You don't. Uh, I mean, no, you don't say Titan Arena Three. I mean, you want, like if you were to pick one event, you would you say ESL. You don't you don't say Kings of the Storm. You don't say you don't say any. <laughs> <laughs> you, you say you want to win ESL season two. Titan uh, Arena Three is canceled, guys. Nobody wants to win it. Rip. No one wants. Rip. Uh, Jaren doesn't want to win it. So you, <laughs> you want to you want to win ESL season two, but. I don't think it's designed for that. The, the title it's holding right now is not what it's designed for. But like Furiously said, this is the event right now. This is our best event. This is where we, like, you know, where you want to look for the consistent competition. Yeah. Um, I've, Matt said it in chat. I've seen Steve said it in chat. That's what the, where did he go? EPS. EPS is for. Uh, but right now this is filling that role. So it, it just, everything feels rushed, you know. Um because yeah. literally, I, when I found out season two is starting, I was like, "What? Already?" I was shocked. I season one gonna... just ended. I thought yeah, we'd have like a month there... or something. Yeah, at least time for relegation tournaments. But I guess so many teams dropped out that got sped up. But like, yeah, it was posted in our team chat. It's like, guys, we're going to be playing like Tuesday or Thursday. I'm like, uh, it's Tuesday now. Like, yeah, what? that's what are you that's talking. The same about? thing happened to us. It's yeah. just like, oh, we're it, it's starting now. Okay, uh, yeah. which is not a bad thing. <laughs> um, you know. Uh, I mean, uh, there's nothing wrong with the format ESL is doing. It's just yeah, right. We're very it, it just feels weird. Just of course, weird. I mean, but I think it's it is a good time to start talking about these kinds of things. And some of you in chat was saying, you know, WCS. I, I'm just yeah, I'm I'm doing that guy. I'm taking that one that one point that came against what I was saying. It was like WCS, uh, the finals for each. There's three seasons of WCS. Each of the finals leads up to BlizzCon, and BlizzCon is like the LCS finals. And I was like, okay, that's great, but in WCS. The word finals coming after WCS is every other week, it feels like, because it's WCS uh, Challenger Finals, then WCS NA Finals, then all the other regional finals, and then it's WCS Season 3 Finals, and then that rolls over each season, so it's like, you have each of the region's finals, and then it goes into the, the grand finals for the world, and then all of a sudden, guess what, it's... Then it all of a sudden goes up to BlizzCon. It just feels like there's just finals all the time for WCS. It's like I think it kills yeah. the hype because there's just finals is almost one of the words that always follows WCS. Yeah, yeah. But that's I agree more of a social media aspect than anything else. But yeah, it, I'd like to see like a yearly championship, and I guess that's what BlizzCon's going to be. Uh, we don't know anything about it. Unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing, and I don't know if this makes the quick turnover time better or worse, is that teams are. Uh, very unstable right now. Yeah. Like even HPL season two was just completely canceled because the teams that qualified are just no longer exist. That's the team's fault though. It's not HPL's. Remember. Right. Yes. I do not blame HPL for that. Not one bit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well played. Yeah. Um, no, but yeah, the the like it's true though. Uh, Teams like to spend and rejoin very quickly. Uh, you know, different players mesh up with different people. Uh, like a lot of the teams that qualified for season two, are all were on different teams at one point or another. They were like each other's opponents, and now they're playing together. And things are just really just like shake up. It feels like every like week or two weeks. Yeah. Um, Wildfire, Tempest, EG, all ripping pieces. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and, and I those mean, are the, those are popular teams. Happens. Yeah. You know, think of all the like up and coming teams that have disbanded that like we barely even hear of. You know. Yeah, Mur- the f- Murloc geniuses signed up for Titan Arena Three. That's, that's what yes. I know. That is Ooh. a an that's amalgamation exciting. of the two teams. Yeah, I love they, their they played. I think they played in. Oh, yeah, it was, was it Sunday. Uh, it was. I, I saw a team. Yeah, it was Faye, Cawthon, Mad Timmy, Rarjar, and there was a fifth. I don't remember who. There had to have been a fifth. There had to have been a fifth, right? Well, obviously, it's in heroes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, you know, teams just been, and it, it's yeah. um, gonna happen a lot in the early stages where a team just disbands instead of pulling in new members. You know, when you ha- when you're barely getting in the practice as five, and then suddenly one of them quits playing. There, there's there there might be a huge player base, but 
You know, it's not like it would be in the LCS where like someone starts playing poorly. You just you have hundreds and thousands of kids who are up and coming challenger leagues that you could be like, yoink, you're mine. Yeah, can't do that here. So teams like are going to disband a lot. It's it's actually crazy the fact uh, that so many teams have lasted as long as they have. Uh, just because there's no money in this, you know, the amount of practice times that all these teams are putting in for almost nothing. Um, yeah. There's, you know, a lot Those of people volunteer just can't, hours. <laughs> basically, yeah. You, you see that in the like the teams that are winning events. It's like these are the teams that are the most stable and have had rosters the longest. Like Tempo Storm, I think, has had the most consistent roster in the entire history of the game, and like it shows. Like they play so so well together. Yeah. And like they just have a year of experience playing with each other, and it's so difficult for new teams to come in and have that synergy. Yeah, even if it's like even like uh, we were just talking about Murloc Geniuses, those were all five good players from formerly other teams. Yep. But this game is so synergistic that yeah. um, you can't just pull those five. Oh, it's Cattle Prod. Yes, Cattle. Yeah. Was the fifth. Right. Um, cattle. Yeah, you, cattle. Those cattle all five. Pillar. Five of those cattle players cattle are very solid players, but. You, they don't have the synergy yet, and they're going to have to work towards it. And it takes a really long time, as we've seen, to build that synergy, and not only get that synergy, but to start like really start taking games off of teams that have had that synergy for years. Or not years, but for, sorry, for months um, already. So it's just a huge uphill battle, but we need more people to take that uphill battle. Yeah. yeah. Because if we, don't have, if we just have the same people, then... We're not going to get anywhere. So it's it's a really difficult situation that Heroes is still in. Um, and you know I'm not going to be I'm not going to shy away from him. I'm not going to say that you know that it's it's too scary, but it is it is kind of a scary situation to be in because if we don't get those people that have that drive, who knows if we're actually going to get anywhere with Heroes? It is improving though. It is definitely it is. improving. I definitely will say improving. that like like the casting for the playoffs and stuff, like it felt exciting. It felt like these teams had been around long enough. There's just like, alright, they're starting to build up their story. We know who these teams are, everything's recognizable. And and to me that felt like a big step forward, at least in terms of growth for the scene. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I, I was very happy with ESL season one. You know, yeah, I, I went too. through all of the uh the replays and the casts of uh, all the final games, and it, it was a lot of fun to watch. I mean, even though I had already like seen it and experienced it, like just hearing your guys' analysis of it and comparing what you were saying to what I was thinking, it was like so cool. <laughs> wow, there's a oh, there's a comparison there, huh? I'm I'm curious as to. Oh, I'm sure it was. <laughs> <laughs> we aren't pro players or anything, right? So, but yeah, no. I mean, you guys know what you're talking about. Like, absolutely. I, I think you guys' analysis. Please don't say those things. <laughs> <laughs> It's so much fun to hear you guys talk about drafting. That's one of my favorite things. And it's like, oh, they're, are they going to go this? Are they going to go this? And I'm like, okay. Yeah, there's, that's there's an interesting perspective. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff where it's like, oh, nobody on our team even plays that here. I was like, we didn't happen to know that. We're like, they should <laughs> grab this. Why didn't they grab this? Oh. Yeah, yeah that, that happens. Yeah. I think that's like uh, one of. The, I think that's speaking of that. Just to t- uh, touch on that really quickly before we get to our next point is that I, I think that's one of the hardest things as a caster right now to do. Yeah. Uh, is to not only accurately get that, uh, get the drafting down, but also to hype it up because it is so much of the game. It, it is a huge chunk of that. Yeah. Like I, I watched the, uh, I watched the Navi versus the Kicks. What was it? What was the name? That was such a weird set, by the way. Uh, that was a really weird set. Kicks. I think it's the Kicks or something like that. Um, and I'll say right now, it was like, you know, Kaldor had the draft screen up. But he only like he showed it for like half a second and then just kind of went into game and I was like, whoa, there is a storyline with that draft because I that is what, yeah, Diablo Ben Zeratul first pick, Arthas last pick, yeah, like, that needs a little bit of talking. I that, think I think yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Maybe that's normal for Europe, but over Maybe Kyler was like, strange. this makes no sense. Don't even, not even gonna bother with it. Just <laughs> not go even gonna try. It. This is the game. Just, so this, yeah, yeah, so that's you know that's one of those things, and uh, and. As a caster, I, I can kind of see his point because it is hard to to really get the the hype going for draft, even though it is such a big part of this game right now. Yeah, lunatic kicks. That's it. it was a really good game though, so I do recommend everybody go check that out. Uh, that was that was really interesting to see, especially with Sindra Gosa coming back out again. Spoilers. Ew, stop. That's slight spoilers. <laughs> yeah, it was a cool set. Um, yeah, drafting so it's so important. Uh, we talked about it last week with Dunk Train. Uh, the draft is yeah. as much part of the gameplay as it is. Yeah, yeah, it just it's that important. You know, it's it's fifty. It might even be more than fifty percent of the battle. 
Uh, the draft is so important. Um, and it's the caster's job to not only be able to um, convey that hype, but to be able to explain why picks were made when they were made. Not just the yes. composition as a whole, why this hero was picked first rotation as second pick. Why, why did they go for the, you know, each of those specific things? Why, like, it, it's yeah. so important, the yeah. draft. There is sometimes another... it's hard. Ahead, sometimes it's hard for us as uh, players to keep up with like why people are picking what, and like we're like okay, so who are we playing against now? What do they prioritize? And these are people that we play against all the time. We're constantly scrimming. So for casters, like it's got to be really tough to keep up with that and to be able to analyze it live and explain it to people. Like it's definitely tough. A lot of respect to you guys for that. Um, ESL too, because it was a brand new patch and everyone oh, yeah. was like, you know, like. No one was really, uh, like, we all had our own stuff that we came up with. Like, everyone, like, if you look at the very first round, um, every team was doing something different. And, mm -hmm. like, t target bans started coming out because people didn't have time to prepare for other things. And, like, following, uh, yeah, I, I was really happy with ESL Season 1. I was worried that it was coming so soon after the patch, but I think it made it very exciting. It did, did make okay. it, because you saw the meta, like, developing right there. And that yeah, was the like first over the huge weekend. tournament. It was so cool. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, but Jared, back to that that point about the the drafting, especially in it being such a large part of the match's outcome, it is also important for the casters not to like overemphasize it because we don't want to make it sound like the game is yeah. lost before it's even begun. To well, so yes, it's big, it's important, but. Hey, hey, you know what, guys? Um, why don't you just go get yourself some food for the next 20 minutes? We already know who won. <laughs> That's bad, right? So yeah, we no, have to no, make no, sure that sure. we're careful not to do that. Or at There's least a balance. There's we want to make sure that we emphasize how important it is in the draft. And sometimes I'll throw it to Jake. I'm like, Jake, who do you think won this draft? Because you know, sometimes there is a clear winner based on some mind games that happened. And that's really cool to see. But you have to make sure to always emphasize that the game isn't over there's a lot of ways to play around things that happened in the draft etc so you should never an analyze a draft as a caster from the general perspective you should always analyze it from the team who's picking perspective yeah because so, if you personally want to pick like kerrigan sylvanas in the situation but they go like uther tyronda don't go they should have went this you go oh these two heroes because of this that is well i mean so that's actually a really this is like a this is like a StarCraft too. Zoe, you know this so well. You don't point out the flaws. You point out who took advantage of it. It's it's actually a really hard thing to do as a caster because you really want to like point out like I don't agree with this choice or man they obviously made a flaw here. It's more of what can we like make this out into like sound, make it sound cool at the same time as also like not bring in your own opinion too harshly. That is yep. that is a really important thing I think I learned uh, with StarCraft casting because I'd be like, wow, this is really cool, but I would have gone for a drop build, and then all of a sudden you see chat be like, dumb freaking caster and all this other stuff. It's like, all right, gold leaguers, thank you for your information. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but it's a good point because if you do too much of that, you start sounding overly yeah. negative. Yep. It doesn't matter if what you're saying is right. It can still come off as an overall negative vibe to the Just cast. look for those advantages. It's yeah. a, really, a really hard thing to do, but yep. it is it is something... We, I, in in heroes, I find it's not that bad. In StarCraft Two, okay. it was it was like <laughs> this guy put his like his siege tank line into where a bunch of Zergling were just running, and you have to be like, wow, this guy's siege tanks, mm, those Zerglings took advantage of that situation. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I want to say the siege tank shouldn't have been there. Yeah. In StarCraft, yeah. it was ninety nine percent statement, but one percent of it sounds like an opinion. You're yeah. getting reamed. Yep. you're just done. <laughs> Yeah, anyway. that'd be really tough for me. If uh, like I'd just be like, oh, he just completely whiffed that ultimate, and <laughs> like I guess it should be more like something like, oh, you know, nice dodge. No, that's why you, it's always you know, so that's the thing though. Is like you know, if they're act actively dodging it, then you could be like, nice dodge. You just be like, oh man, you know, they narrowly missed that. Like you know, this team missed the ultimate or something like that, and they were able to capitalize on the fact that the ultimate, um, you know, or something like that. It's just. It's weird. It's hard. It's very difficult, but yeah, you can uh, say, and it's a very I, subtle thing too. A lot of a lot of people will uh, vocally say that is not something you're supposed to like, just kind of avoid or miss. But at the same time, the 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 silent minority, I think, appreciate that kind of casting way more. It's anyway. Sorry, yep. just to go on a, the tirade. No, it's a good there. discussion to have. Apparently, we have we have four casters that host this show, guys. Sorry for the casting <laughs> tirade. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, we only have three casters on here today. Jake's here in spirit. Back off, bro. I, 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 I. Anyway, 
so let's get on into our next discussion, and this is actually kind of why it turned out a little bit into the drafting discussion. Catalyst, Sea of Steve's new tournament, happening this Saturday. It's a little bit different. Yeah, um, oh, I wish I had the thread open. I'm so bad at this. I know, I know. What, off the, the top of my head, the big yeah. difference is drafting. Uh, I have it. I will. Get it is it. the draft. There, there's maps as well. New maps. Uh, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. it's not necessarily. Well, there, there is a new set of maps in there, but uh, the maps are set per yeah. round. Yeah. So yeah. round one, you play on Tomb of the Spider Queen, and I think they're all best of ones. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you play on that map. Yeah. So there's a little bit uh, in in theory about some pre planning, strategy wise. Um, you know, okay, well, we might be not playing against the best of teams, especially for our, like a generally higher seeded team. I'm actually not sure how the seeding works for the tournament, but um, so there might be some strategy, at least in terms of developing, you know, on this map. Round one, we know we're playing here. What can we get together beforehand? So that's one thing. And then there's the second set of bands. That's the much bigger thing. And I see that Matt has just posted the. Link oh, Matt, you're the best. What a guy. What a guy. You're the there it is. Best. All right, so. <laughs> One of the, I think the thing the the thing that really kind of catches my eye is the the map assignments that we I mean I think we've seen that before but I think the draft order is the one that really needs to be emphasized yep. here. Yeah, that's the big one. Yeah, yeah, okay. So it starts off um, standard both teams ban. Um, but then it go. I think this is the Dota two style, if I'm correct. Yeah, yeah I believe he yeah. did draw us a lot of parallels from Dota two when he was um, trying to. So come. team instead of it being. Um, it was one, two, 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 one before. I think I missed a two. Um, now it's team one picks, then team two picks two, then team one picks only one this time. Yeah, normally there would be two there. Now normally there'd be two there. And then there's a second set of bans. So now there's in the middle of a draft, both teams get to ban another hero each, making a, a total of four heroes banned for the game, which that alone, even if you were to just put four bans to start and keep the same drafting format we had, would ship the meta very so different. much. Mm -hmm. Very, very much. Um, and then it goes to, uh, after those two bands, team two picks one, uh, then it just rotates one just pick, says one, 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 all the way until it's done. So am, I the so, so am I the only person who tried to uh, pronounce this out loud? Yep. 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 Um, it's, it's so it's, I'm just gonna, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. I uh, I mean, most people from the competitive scene are gonna say it's too early for two bands, which C S Steve probably agrees with. I'm I'm actually ninety nine percent sure he thinks it's too early for two bands. This entire thing is just to test the waters. There's no prize pool in it. There's no, there's there, it's not gonna count to Stormcraft rankings. It's yeah. just yep. a tournament to test the waters. It's like we, how many times have we ch changed the way we've drafted since competitive scene has started? We've never once changed it. We've had the one ban, one ban, and it's been the one, two, 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 one the entire time. We're just testing the waters, seeing how it feels. And yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. I know. I, I, I think it's, I think it's, honestly, I think it's not too early to start doing the uh, four total bans. Because already, if this was another game, like, I don't want to call out specific games, but I already kind of showed you where I was going with that one. There are some times in that meta where there's only, like, 15 viable heroes. In heroes, though, we have been seeing a really, really widespread in terms of picks and bans. And I think it's okay to go with those those four bans just because of those wide a range of picks. I think after the Sylvanas patch, we've kind of started focusing down again onto, like, a certain select amount of heroes. But I think that's just because of, like... The new patch. Everybody wanted to go back to something that's more familiar, but I think I think uh, this is a good time for to try something like this. Yeah, uh, the cool the cool thing is, drafting is so it's so interesting. Once you actually get involved with drafting, it is one of the coolest things in this game. And mm -hmm. there are so many things that we can learn from. Like, just if this were to become the meta, there's so many things that would change. Um, like. You like before? It's like we could always like you know if you're going for Diablo Uther Toronto, you could easily deny that as the enemy team now and still get comfort picks for yourself. It just opens up the door so much to where yeah. you can see them aiming for a certain combo, but you can't deny it in the current draft setup because you still want your two comfort picks for your combo that you're aiming for. So you just kind of let them get it. But now there's ways to play around that. It, there's so much. There's more counterplay involved. 
if it it's it maybe like when we have 20 more heroes or whenever it feels like we do want the two bands maybe this format would be much cooler because a more complex draft system for a game that's so draft intensive just adds so much more strategy and fun to the game um so yeah. i'm all on board for this for like you know giving this shot and seeing how it feels i think it's really cool yeah i'm very very excited to see how it goes uh for so many reasons like i've been looking at this and i'm like okay you know like there's like a hundred different ways this can go and uh, you know like you said four bands alone is already going to change everything uh in terms of power picks and what heroes are now necessary to fill out your team like the whole meta is going to shift because of that but not only that um you can now with two bands maybe like target ban out a player like okay yeah. this person has a really good illidan and zera tool so we're going to ban those two and then he's also good on uh, i don't know like what vala so like we're going to first pick vala and like that player is just going to be weaker now. Like if you can target ban out a player, like you might see that, and you know the whole draft is it's just going to change uh, with two bans. And I'm really excited to see how it goes. Uh, with the bans in the middle of the draft, we may not see that so much because they might be like, okay, like we need to grant this hero for this person before the next round of ban comes. Maybe not. We'll see. Uh, super exciting though. I can't like I think this is really really cool. I don't know if it's necessarily going to be better, but I'm very excited to see how it goes. Are what? you guys playing in the tournament? Uh I do not know. Uh I don't think that there's a bracket up. Uh I would love to play in it. I really hope that we're invited to play in it. There's a uh, challenge you can sign up for, I believe, right? It seems to be empty. Oh, it's empty. You can't sign up for it yet. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> um So So do you think that there's any compositions that this... I mean, this is really new. I'm sure you guys haven't really talked a ton with your teams about this kind of thing yet. Off the top of your head, do you think there's any compositions that this immediately puts a giant dagger through? No, no, it'll never take a dagger or something, but the, let's just take uh, key combos. Like Diablo Toronto, for instance. That's one of the namesake combos right now. Where those two together are just one of the best pickoff comps in the game right now. They're, they're very similar to how Arthas Kerrigan was. If you see a team, uh, especially in the... Because in the first half of the draft, you have four picks. You're going to be prioritizing things like Uther, Rhaegar, Vala, Jaina, uh, the, high, the Illidans, the high-hitting. But once you get to the one 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 part, you don't pick Diablo... You, you rarely see Diablo Taronda picked separate. It's always in those two slots. Diablo mm -hmm. Taronda in that one rotation. How can you do that with this second half of the draft when it's one 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 one? Yeah. So You'd have that, to. there's a lot of counterplay to that kind of stuff there. Yeah, look look at one hero and say, what are they trying to do with this? And there are more ways to interrupt that now with that, that alternating set of picks. My Shit. first instinct... Oh, sorry to cut you off. No, go ahead, go ahead, that's fine. Uh, my first instinct with that was to kind of like have a fork pick. Like, we like to combo Diablo with Tyrande. We also like to combo him with Zeratul. They're both up. Let's pick Diablo. If they take one, we'll just take the other one. Yep, yeah. that's, that was what I was that's thinking. That's smart. Yeah. There's, like, a lot, uh, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with this draft. It just adds so much more... Uh, just, for, you know, because... Uh, I don't know. It's just so cool. I, I just like the idea of thinking it, it, about the drafts exciting. with this format because it adds so much more complexity to it. And the draft is already almost one of my favorite parts of the game right now. Do you think they're going to get a huge advantage no, out of this? No. Oh, I thought he was going to make a complexity joke. Okay. <laughs> I was going for a complexity joke. <laughs> wow, you caught that like right away. He's, he knows. No, don't. Kumi, <laughs> Kumi is it. actually secretly. You know, they say that people who are like. Uh, no. <laughs> really good at being mean to others are actually like really good at empathy because they just understand a person's situation so they know like where to strike. Kubi is that, but with puns. <laughs> He's now coming up with puns in his head in order to like shoot down my puns. And it's, it's he's going to eventually become the punter himself. <laughs> it's it's going to happen, Kubi. You're going to start releasing uh, puns and then you're not going to be able to uh, stop. Twitter before, too arc, too furious. That was uh, oh, yeah, right? Right? Yeah. I didn't feel proud of myself, and it had to happen for some reason. I have no idea why. It's just in the history of our one-year friendship, I've scolded <laughs> Kubi maybe once or twice. Most of them happen when we're playing the game, and he does dumb things, whatever. This is the first time anything he said has upset me. Okay, way to go, Kubi. <laughs> way to go. Man. Did you see? Did you see my tweet earlier about what Blizzard confirmed today? Only one, what, Kev? I said, so now that paws are allowed in custom games, is Rexar confirmed? Because now Misha can have feet. Stop. He's the host. We have no control. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know what I put after that? Hashtag unbearable puns. Oh, please. Get Unbearable? Get out. Get out. I see what you did there. <laughs> All right, what's next? Move All right. <laughs> um, the, uh, the pick Ben, I think, is also really cool because uh, there are certain heroes where it's like, okay, this hero is like a step above the others. Or these two heroes are a step above the others in their role. So, you know, like, there's certain range damage that are really good, and then the rest are, like, okay. And there's certain tanks that are really good, and the rest are okay. And what's going to be great is when there's two heroes like that in a role, and, like, having that extra ban, it's like, you know, one team is like, we took the damage, and the other team is like, all right, well, you know, we know the next bans are coming. We might just be screwed on damage. Like, let's screw them on tank. Like, let's take ETC, ban Diablo, and they're stuck on Tyrael, which maybe that team is not comfortable with. And, like... I don't know. I'm, I'm really excited. There's so much stuff yeah. we can do with it, and uh, I think it's going to be so much fun. And supports too. There's only like five healers in the game. If you like, you know, Brightwing gets banned. You pick it with your Rhaegar, ban Mouth. They're stuck on Lily. Lily is a good hero, but not every, any team can play Lily. Like both the support player and the players around them. Like you have if to play you have very Diablo. Hmm. Yeah, that too. That deals that's with like, it. You like, know what I mean? So that's yeah. a good point. That's, that's going to be point. really scary because that means that those first four picks are going to be like. Guys, we need to make sure we get what we, you know, like a warrior and a support in our first four picks. Because if they, if they ban, if there's two bans and, you know, that affects either of them, it's like, we don't pick up anything before the next set of bans. We might not get one. Yeah. yeah. I wonder how much of an advantage second pick will have. Because they're the only team that gets two picks together. Mm. That's that true. Is, that's a that big a deal. That's a good point. That that's is actually yeah. big. Well... And, and drafting those combos, right? Yeah. Well, it's the same as before, though, really. Um, yeah. Because first pick, the, the value of first pick when you're looking at it from a draft perspective is you get the one hero you think is better than the rest, whether it's Vala, Rhaegar, Uther. You get that hero guaranteed no matter what. Yep. Um, so that I think even in this format, even with that being the only two pick the whole time, I still think uh, it's balanced, but maybe not. Well, yeah, because I mean, I think another way to put it is like you, in that first pick, you either pick the hero that stand like by themselves is really great or has the most amount of synergies with other heroes. And then with the second pick, with the two picks, you get something that's just a direct synergy. That would be like the, the top tier synergy of, of, you know, that's not something that's not already banned. Mm. I don't think there's a huge, huge advantage, I don't think. For that second pick, so I, 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 yeah, I think it's it's pretty even. Yeah, um, I, I, I just I'm excited to see the games. I'll be casting yep. it this weekend with Unctuous, um, mm. so mm. I, I, I get to see firsthand how the teams adjust to this. It's like uh, Kev said, best of one the whole way, best of three for the finals. No prize pool. Yeah, it's, it's just a, it's just a, oh, whoever said it, whoever said it, uh, it's Stop it's putting words in my mouth. It's just a test, man. It's just a test. <laughs> is uh, yeah. is is tempo playing? No. No. Why not? Um, starts with an L and ends with an A Z. Uh, wow! Play. Oh my Ooh. goodness! Ooh. Wow! Calling them out. But 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 Jared's gonna be casting it, so it's not even. I'll be casting it. Okay. I'll be casting it. Kevin, are you um, casting? Um, we were playing in Go for Hero Sunday, though. I don't know. Uh, I don't. I have a Twitch stream to cast it. Oh, Kubi, do you want to cast it? Maybe, maybe. Yeah, I'll cast. Dude, let's about, do it. Let's do it. We can talk about this. We'll talk. Dude, Saturday? I'm down. I was going to cast ESL on Sunday, but I can do Saturday instead. I'd rather cast something like this because I feel like... I'm casting happen. both days because I'm a tryhard. You know what? Maybe I'll cast both days. So, yeah, let's cast ESL. Just I'm already plan. casting it with... Wow. Okay. Plus. Cool. Fine. You know what? We're done. We're done Ten Hall. Exit. <laughs> People come to me, man, okay? I, I don't go to them. All right. Uh, I'm on high so, demand right now. So uh, we're going to get on to the next section, but I don't have a graphic for it. End the stream. Yep. I'm sorry. We're gonna, well, we can't, we can't have it. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's it. This is Town Hall. <laughs> Sign it off. See you guys. All right, so we should do this in a round. It's going to get loud and weird, but... I'll start. I'm scared. I have no idea what's going on. I don't know what you're going for or what you're trying to imply. Listen, do you know what a round is? Nope. It's okay. We're, if, you're, if we're seeing row, like, row, 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 row,
No, no, I would start it. Row, Please row, Kevin row, your brother. Questions. And then, and then Kevin would start from the beginning of the song while I'm still singing where I left off at. Uh-huh. This is not gonna work. <laughs> but it's, you realize it's, there's it's, lag like, involved with all this, right? It's fine. It's fine because it's. Maybe I can just sit here and just watch this. All right, all right, all right. Oh, so we'll go, we'll go, we'll go, we'll go, we'll go left to right, and I'll start it off. Then Kubi, you start. No, I don't. No, no, I don't. I'm. You You're guys doing are introducing it. Kubi. You're introducing Kubi. Me. Kubi. No. Who's nope. the host? Who's the host right now? Listen <laughs> to the host, Kubi. He has direct authority. Yes. Listen to me, Kubi. What am I doing? What do I have to do? It's the round. What am I saying? Wow. It's just the Kubi's Kubi's question, but in a round. Okay, so I start halfway through when he's doing. Yeah, when I start yeah. saying questions. Okay. You start doing. Uh, okay. Are we doing it to the row, row, row your boat thing? No, 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 no we're just not. do the the normal Kubi's question. Yeah, right. There. Okay. All right. You ready? <laughs> I don't know what the Kubi's question. Jared was late. He started this whole thing and it was late, straight up late. Awful. All right, we're not doing that, that again. Not work. That was terrible. That did not work. Thanks, Jared. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Thanks, that Jared. Was fun. <laughs> Good theory, but Jared messing it up. No good. All right, Kubi. Do I get to take it away? Do I get to take it away? All right. I didn't we haven't actually had a good discussion on this. I was thinking back. I'm like, oh, I used to like enjoying talking about the new maps as they come out. We actually haven't sat down to talk about Tomb of the Spider Queen. What are you laughing at, Jared? That, that Do you have something you want to share? Oh, <laughs> he's dying. We haven't talked about Tomb of the Spider Queen. Very, very different map. We have now seen some of it in competitive play. Of course, it was banned out for ESL Season 1. Was not playable for e- EU for their finals. Um, I believe it was played in the series of relegations, and we had seen it in the monthly as well. And, of course, the Go For that happened this weekend. So I'm hoping that you guys have at least, I mean, Furious, you've obviously practiced on the map. But I'm hoping the two of you guys have at least seen some competitive matches on this map, etc. So we're going we're gonna to dive right in to talk about the map in depth, do some theory crafting, etc. First topic is, what do we feel about the size of the map? Obviously, it's quite a bit smaller than what we've seen so far in the pool, minus like top side Haunted Mines. But how do we feel like this has an impact on heroes? And honestly, which teams are going to be better on this map? Like, who do you guys foresee uh, really leaning on this map or trying to pick it as often as possible? We'll start with we'll start with Furious. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Uh, okay. Well, one thing that is extremely important on the map, more so than any other map, is vision. Um, being able to keep an eye out on the turn-ins and in between lanes is tremendously important. Um, a lot of uh, teams are doing some heavy, heavy, heavy roaming, uh, clear lane quick, and then everybody goes somewhere else and gank all together. Um, because when you get kills, not only do you get experience uh, to help you boost ahead of the other team, but you're getting extra gems. And gems lead to turn-ins, and turn-ins lead to snowballing. Not as hard as some other maps, but you know, it definitely gets you ahead. Um, so having vision is really important. Uh, some teams really highly prioritize Zagara on the map. Her creep is fantastic. Uh, I've even seen a couple of teams ban Zagara, um, which is unusual uh, yes. on another <laughs> map. <laughs> um, certain uh, people are picking Scouting Drone um, yeah. at level 1 on Brightwing and ETC especially. Yep. And, you know, I would see Scouting Drone on Spider Queen like uh, a week ago or something, and now I'm actually starting to see it on other maps as well. Some people are just like, wait, you know, this is actually kind of good, uh, which I think is pretty cool. I always like to see shifts in the meta and what's going on. Um, So number one is vision. Uh, The small, and the small size of the map contributes to that. And, you know, like I touched on before, clearing your lane quickly and going to gank super important because of the experience and the gems combined. Um, They also in the patch made the time between level 1 and 10 longer, and you have more time to do something with your ultimates when the enemy team doesn't if you can get an early turn in. If you turn in at level 7 and the other team is 6, and then you use that to get all 6 towers, maybe even a fort, if the other team screws up somehow and you like kill them as they're trying to defend, you are way, way ahead for a long time. Um, and it makes the early game important, and it makes your level 10 power spike really important. Okay. Uh, so that's my initial shot. thoughts how on does, the map. Uh, how does 2ARC feel personally as a team on the map? Do you guys feel strong? Would you rather avoid it? it well, all right, I should preface this by saying whatever you feel comfortable 
telling us about. But uh, appreciate that. Advice, uh, if you feel the need to decline that question, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, no, I won't decline the question. Um, I'm here to answer okay. QB's question. Q- <laughs> the queue is messing with me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, the map is definitely difficult to play. Uh, it's different from the other maps, probably because of the change in the 1 to 10. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. Um, I think the map is a lot of fun. I like queuing into it when I'm solo. Uh, we are not as comfortable on the map right now, but that's just because it's new. I'm confident that as we spend more time, uh, we're going to be good at it. And we like the map. We think it's a lot of fun. Definitely. It suits our play style. We like to be roaming. We like to be ganking. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Kev? It's a really interesting map. I haven't really seen too many competitive games on it yet, but I've been playing like a lot of Hero League um, and getting it quite often. I've seen a lot of really cool strategies that I think have been coming out. Um, if you asked me, probably given the competitive scene, probably about a couple months ago or about a month ago, uh, who I would see probably excelling on that map, I would have probably said something like Evil Geniuses, honestly. Like, not to the point that they'd be winning a lot of tournaments, but I that was like one of their big styles. <laughs> was, uh, Dragonshire, they used to they used to roam as four and. They had really good dominance in, in, in those laning phases, and I think that's something that's really emphasized and really good on this map so far. Um, a couple of really cool strategies I've seen as soon as you get the first turn and go up and get boss, uh, yeah, which is one of the one of the cool things that I saw. Um, but, I mean, as soon as I saw it once, I was like, okay, that's the telltale sign that if everybody's missing, they're at boss, and it's a throw pit. But, uh, you know, I guess if, if you're trying to keep your enemy unaware or something like that, or make it a bait... Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's a really interesting map. I have to completely agree. Zagara, really strong on that map, as well as Vision. Um, and, you know, you were bringing up the Scouting Drone is coming back into play. Uh, they changed it to have two charges now, right? That yeah, like Scouting yeah. Drone is just straight Yeah, better. two charges now. So that's, 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 it. it takes two hits to kill it. So that's, I think that's a huge buff to it, as well as the fact that there's two egg spots. I think the Scouting Drone is a really good pickup on that map. Um, scouting Drone also has a small range now. You used to have to be yeah. right next to it now you can throw it over a wall yeah so So i think it's uh it's a really cool map i like the idea of throwing out those type of smaller maps because that was something that was a big problem with starcraft 2 uh (laughs) they started off every map what that they came out in starcraft 2 was like super small and then eventually everything got huge it looks like heroes they're just releasing some huge maps some small maps and just going everything in between uh i think it's a good thing to to like at least throw around is it just those three heroes that have scouting drone? Yeah. Malf, Malf, ETC, Brady, ETC, and uh, Rainer, or did they take it away? Look. No, I don't think Rainer has it. He does. He does. He does have wow, it. Wow, I did not know that. Yo, Rainer, back in meta. I Skills. Yo, he's good now. Yes. So, <laughs> all right, Jared. Thoughts? What team um, do you think is gonna be good? How do you feel about the size of the map? Size of the map is fine. Um, like Kevin said, diversity and the testing things out. I think the size is fine. Um, what team is gonna be good at it? I don't know. Um, remember, we, we, we took the whole last week off, um, and we took Monday, Tuesday off of this week. And you're taking Saturday <laughs> off as well, apparently. <laughs> and, <laughs> well, because we had people moving, and um, they just everyone got to house Sunday, um, so we're getting settled in. So um, I've only seen like three games on it scrim wise. So I'm still. I like the map. How, how Temple Storm felt on it? I guess you don't have an answer for that. Right. Um, same as Furious D's answer, really. It's uh, we. You know, we're not we we don't fully understand the map, but we're not unconfident. Like we don't go into it going like, yeah. uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're, what we're was interesting over. was the tournament that I kept the monthly for the ESL. When we whenever we casted Vortex's games, they like first pick that map every every set. Vortex so, is uh, weird, man. Don't they? That, that's just uh, something to point out. So uh, while you guys are like, okay, we're okay with it, Vortex is like, let's do it. Let's take it every time. So I thought that was an interesting thing. Yeah, credit to them and to the teams that do that. To like, uh, just as soon as the patch comes out, they just pick something and focus it. And they're like, even if this isn't the best, we're going to be the best at it, and you're not going to be ready for it. Yeah. And like, uh, you know, for a while we were successful last patch. Um, we were just like Sergeant Hammer, Sergeant Hammer, Sergeant Hammer, and people weren't quite ready for it. And you know, some people would be like, oh, okay, well, like we'll pick stitches and we'll hook the hammer, and we had Tyrael block the hook, sword right out, and people were like, huh, now what do we do? And even though Sergeant Hammer wasn't the strongest thing, by the end of the patch, no one was picking her anymore. We had success with it just because 
we got good at it. We forced ourselves to get good at it. And if that's what Vortex is doing with Spider Queen, Spider Queen then you know, yeah. I think they're doing that's a smart move. One thing that's really really great about the map, one of my favorite things, is the sound effect when the spiders finally spawn. It's like that low, like, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so cool. Every time the spiders respond, I'm like, here it comes, here it comes. Yeah, you oh, get, a good, was sweet. get a good feel for it. Yeah, that, that's an important yeah. thing for the map, too, is that you feel like, thematically that it's, like, impactful, et cetera, as well. All right, next question is map mechanic. How do we feel about the, the gem mechanic from the waves and strategies that lie within that? Uh, we talked a little bit about the multiple turn-in spots and then the web weavers themselves and how good they are at pushing, etc. Um, whoever wants to take this, Jared. Um, it's interesting. Like, there's some games where if a team has a big enough advantage where you can really snowball the first spider wave. Um, but then there's some games where, I, where like, uh, not competitively speaking, but like when I'm doing solo queue and stuff, I see games where a team will get the spiders and get like literally nothing done with it. Yeah, um, yeah, it happens. So I don't know. I, I, I really like on the like. I, I always flip. Like sometimes I feel like, wow, this is like a really powerful mechanic. And then sometimes I'm like, I don't know. It didn't do anything. <laughs> it doesn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. especially late game, I feel that uh, it's so hard to end at times if you don't like get a kit pick. It's hard to just go core because the way the, the it's already starts at fifty. So like late game, say you're like need sixty five gems. Yeah. If all the waves are pushed up, you're not getting kills and stuff. Like like best you can do is like take boss and mercs, and then it's just kind of like waiting for them to miss position and stuff. I don't like the mechanic. Sometimes feels really strong, but I think most of the time, I don't. I don't know. It's kind of underwhelming. Yeah. It like it's so hard to get a grasp of. It feels almost random. There was one time, I was pushing and I like. Uh, I killed a keep and I was so surprised that the keep died. Like I had just taken down the wall. I think I was playing murky. I threw like a puffer fish and then someone came and killed me and then before I rest the keep was dead and I'm like how did that even happen? Like mm. it was just at full life and then other times you summon it and it barely even reaches their towers and you're just like yeah. what's, what's going on? Some of it has to do with whether they get to summon two rounds of the little spider things that come with it yeah. and mm -hmm. if that happens, like if it gets enough time to push, that, that might be why that happens but yeah but the other right. thing about that is they just lose health over time even if nothing That's is true. touching them so mm -hmm. if you're pushed all the way to your base it's just gonna die before it reaches their keep right. and like it does nothing it, like i guess it gives you lane equilibrium back but that lane is kind of forfeit it's it's like tough to know when to turn in because you can kind of control it and it's like do we wait for 16 versus 15 and we like we force a fight at an advantage uh our lanes are in bad positions like maybe a merc's about to come up there's so many ways to play it so I've it's seen, tough to get a grasp on. I've seen two situations, and both of them were just a lane that nobody was in, nobody was pushing. So it was, I think it was like bot lane or something. One was the spider creeps spawned. They pushed and they took a tower, or they took the fort, just by themselves, just took a fort. Huh. I've also seen they got one tower, and it was just like I don't think there was a major difference between both of those. Uh, a, a big thing is, of course, going to be like whether or not your creep wave was already pushed to that tower. Because if, you know, uh, if they can get all the way to the tower and then they they spawn, they do a lot more. But it's just yeah, I completely agree. The mechanic just feels like, like, it does. It just feels like sometimes it feels like it does nothing, and sometimes it feels like it's just like wow, this is like the strongest mechanic in the game. But if yep. you're behind, I feel like it does nothing. Yeah, it, if you lose a person like right as your things are spawning, like I feel like there's just nothing that happens there. That's Another true. thing that's very frustrating about it when you're behind is it pushes all the lanes up and you don't quite get any structure damage, and then like all the spiders that you need gems from are dying way over there, and now you just can't get gems again for another turn. And now that you have the lanes where you want them to be, so that kind of bothers me a little bit. Yeah, like late game, like they're. There's no real, like, it's very hard, like, late game, like, post, like, 20 and stuff, it's, it feels close to impossible to get turn-ins. It just, it's such a grind to get them, like, yeah, kills given and stuff, but that's it. Like, and if you're getting kills post 20, you can probably threaten core. Um, yeah. It's like, if, if one team is just looking to stall out the game, with, like, their lanes being pushed, they can sit there all day getting gems, and, like, you can't really push up, they, they, it, I don't know, it's, it's really... It, it, I guess yeah, we've all said it, but it's 
sometimes it's just very flip floppy. Sometimes it's like, wow, this is a really crazy game, and sometimes it's just like, well, we're looking for a way to end right now. One thing I do think is very cool is the way the gems drop and how you can't steal them, but you can guard them. I think yes. that's yeah. similar cool. to Black Hearts, but a little bit different, like just different enough so that it feels different. Like when you kill someone and it's like, all right, they drop 25, like zone them, zone them, keep them away. And it turns into like this tiny zone control fight. It's really, really a lot of fun. It's so yeah. cool. The zoning is actually the cool. The, the early game is so much fun on this map. You, the zone mechanic, how much aggression there is in the early game. Um, it, the early game is a lot of fun because of these factors. Um, I just feel like the map falls off a really hard late game. So you guys would like to see some kind of extra mechanic get added to the Web Weaver push? Like maybe post? like if, maybe like post fifteen. I don't know what, what they could do. Like post fifteen minutes, Mark start getting gems or something. Because late game sometimes it's just it feels so grindy to get yeah. a turn in, and it's hard to end without it at times. So unless yeah. you get like, I have noticed that as well. It just it just feels like they always just get to the keeps and die. Get to the keeps yeah. and then they die. Right. That's a good point. Especially with a mule. If there's a mule on the map. This is another oh, yeah. map where the mules are really strong, I find. Because, like, in other, me uh, other mechanics, like the Grave Golem uh, on Haunted Mines, that's a pushing mechanic. But the Grave Golem immediately has that search radius where it just automatically kills a mule. Which is yeah. the dumbest thing. I don't know. Oh, it's so aggravating. <laughs> but in this map, it shoots the, the light beam thing which that doesn't also really make much sense to me spider wise like why is why are spiders shooting like light beam wave things but anyway it's a good question uh anyway uh <laughs> i, I mean, find mules are really strong on this on this map because you can just put it the mule in an area where that light beam thing is not going to hit it and you can just repair it faster than the spider do damage to it yeah that's true all right next point is space between the lanes i think a lot of us when we first looked at the layout of the map we're like whoa look at this weird gate thing over here and like these like you know walled off areas that are between the already close together lanes do you guys feel as though some of these like nooks and crannies are going to have a big impact in strategies or going to be kind of a moot point mm. yep. they are definitely going to be something big in the strategy uh that removes a lot of heroes that had that mobility advantage i feel uh false that brightwing okay i feel like are going to be a little less effective on this map because they you know, they don't stage dive i mean yeah, kind of stage dive is still important but it it, le it loses a lot of its uh draw seen a lot of mosh pit of yeah mosh pit is is i think way better especially with all the little areas you can like get that clutch mosh pit yeah there's um, a lot of close quarters Sergeant Hammer, I would say it'd actually be stronger on this map because he, uh, yeah. she doesn't have to mount up at all, and she doesn't have to use Z to get from A to B. So it's does uh, E use still pick hammer? Sorry, does E use still pick hammer? Yeah, I think so. They're so. Weird. I haven't seen it. I haven't <laughs> seen it in EU lately, but I, I feel like they are still using it. Who knows? Uh, I played hammer on the map. I think it's it, it. The game didn't go great for us, but I think that was for other reasons. Hammer does feel strong. She's great pushing with the spiders and she's great defending the spiders that's what i was thinking like she's it's like it's like dragonshire where you have like just a, a mechanic that's going to sit in front of you that you can really kind of yeah just wail on it yep yeah um, <laughs> and mines help with the turn in and not getting ganked like you yeah. can just keep mining the fog like every cooldown just keep dropping mines kerrigan was really strong on that map i found just yeah, because just... she's got so many spots to leap in on you yeah and it's just so close quarters yeah. I don't know. Like, you, yeah. you want to dodge sideways, and there's just nowhere to go. You're like, oh, all right, got me. Yep. I, I, I think, think what a lot of us predicted, just based on the size of the map, the ease of rotations between the lanes would be pretty heavy, and then picking Kerrigan made a lot of sense. So we'll be curious to see where she fits into the meta compared to other maps. Um, so quick aside, actually, if you're interested, I'm curious. You mentioned Hammer. Do you think... The fact that Hammer is not being played, this is just completely aside from this discussion on this map. Do you think Hammer is going to okay. come back? Uh, I think Hammer will come back. I don't know what he's doing either. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> what is that, Jared? No question. No question. Just freaking. Yeah, I'm Gooby, and I like Hammer. Let me, yeah, let me well, derail the conversation. To, uh. I'm curious. Okay, he mentioned Hammer. You know what? So, so you, you know think what? so? I think it's uh, what? 
Shantu, are you gonna are you gonna derail my my segment? I'm gonna derail your I'm gonna derail you because you're talking about your favorite hero. I'm gonna say this about my favorite hero on this map. I don't think Diablo is a good pick on this map. Don't. I don't think he is. Interesting. Explain yourself. Really weak laner. There's not a lot of uh, situations where us. I I feel like right now. <laughs> okay. Jared's having a rough day, I guess. <laughs> I feel like, um, but he's especially, good at roaming. especially because the map mechanic, uh, you don't want to have like somebody pushed super far in. There's not a lot of places you can. Shadow charge and overpower are great in areas where you like the enemy. Mm, how to best put this? There's a lot of ways for the enemy to run around you. Like, it's a close quarters map, but there's a lot of ways that the enemy can run around the Shadow Charge and Overpower. Like, Cursed Hollow, there's that hallway. And that hallway, like, it's like a single lane. There's a couple of those on this map, but I don't feel like there's enough of them to actually take advantage of it. Um, and I, he's, I don't know what Diablo you guys are playing, but he's not a great way to like clear out cre creeps at all and that's like kind of a huge part of this map i mean he's always what been, he's always i think like, he's so good at roaming good. he's so no, I, no. He's, so good at roaming, though. That's, he's, not, like, he's good at roaming player. yeah but i can't really already there's already... remember a time when he shadow charged someone and they didn't get wall stunned it happens like every time yeah on this map. he's so good on roaming yeah but I think there's better rumors out there. It's so good there. to get kills. You denied them their gems. That's almost more important than getting your own gems. It's taking away theirs. It's like, it, you, you, you spend, like Furiously said, you spend so little time in the lane. You push your lane and then you go someplace else to make sure they're not turning in. Or you go to get kills. Or to take gems from them. I don't... And Diablo is so, is one of the best early game aggression heroes. Okay. Because he can I, secure I, so many kills. I don't this like him on Kev, the map. Kev is Diablo I don't expert. like him on the this map. Is his just gotta he say, you know, it. I've been the Diablo okay. expert. Just gonna say, he doesn't feel that strong on the map. Okay. All right. Lightning Breath and Apoc, I think, are also pretty good. Apoc's, like you can't get away. pretty good on this map because there's it's if I mean the competitive scene still kind of sucks at putting down Apoc. I'm still gonna say that, but Lightning Breath, I would say your competitive the competitive right. you competitive kids who can't actually land Apoc. Lightning Breath is gonna be a good uh, alternative for you guys, but I still feel like I mean ETC would obviously always be a better choice on this map. ETC is super good. He's like, ETC is a better choice on every map. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's, he's One thing, ETC. I love the body blocks that ETC provides. It's like, I'm going to block you, I'm going to block you, I'm going to block you. Now I need to get out, I slide through you. Like, that's it. Yeah, like, this, that's so people. frustrating. Like, especially by that bottom one where you have to go through the fog and then turn left or right to get into the middle lane, coming from the bottom lane to the middle lane. When ETC is in there, you're just like, I'm just screwed now. Like, yeah. It's tough. I'm just to one of these side ends. Yeah, I'm going to yeah, say this thing, and everybody's going to be like, Shampoo, right. you're not allowed on the show anymore. Okay. Je we're just now getting to that point, Kev? <laughs> You've said some pretty bold things so far. Go Come ahead, on. Kev. Bring it on, Kev. What's next? Go ahead, Kev. We're waiting. I don't want to say this. <laughs> no, you don't have to say it. I honestly feel like... <clears throat> no. Guys, I'm going to need help after this one. Okay, okay. I feel okay. like... All these choices are better picks than Diablo on this map. Stitches, Muradin, and Chen. Murd? Murd. <laughs> Murd. <laughs> if he had rewind still, I would agree. He does, at level 20. Level 20. Appa. If he had rewind still, I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to gonna go. Jared, you okay? <laughs> Oof. We need to call. Uh, him. I, I think lost. we lost him. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, this might be my inner hipster talking. Like, I feel like I've been playing oh. a lot less Diablo since Diablo's been. Yeah, that's that is standard Kev stuff right there. I've been playing a lot of Muradin. I don't even know why I'm surprised right now. <laughs> <laughs> Muradin's a ton of fun to play until you're like, wow, I cannot kill anybody. Like, I just don't do anything. Like, I stun them great, and then I walk away. Like, I don't that's know. True. That's how I feel when I play Meriden. I just love his... I don't know. I love, like, all the little mini stuns, and, uh, I love... I love the Q build. I just love Perfect that Siege storm. damage. The Sledgehammer is really fun. Yeah, like, Sledgehammer like, build bam. is so great. Sledgehammer 1, is Perfect Storm. Did. People are questioning Chen. Have you guys seen a barrel on this map yet? Barrel is hilarious mm. on this map. Yeah, Absolutely you know, hilarious. Another hero I don't think very good on this map is Vala. 
Can't get much value out of siphoning arrow on these narrow quarters. Oh wait, that makes no sense. Like the rest of this <laughs> conversation. <laughs> Touche. Uh, go okay. into a little bit what Kubi asked me before about Sergeant Hammer. I think yep. she will come back. Uh, she's one of the heroes. <laughs> she's like cyclical. You know, she's good for a while. People get used to her. People get good at playing against her, and then she drops off, and then people just kind of forget about her, and she comes out of nowhere, and you know, just catches you off guard. Uh, she has really high auto attack damage. Her numbers in terms of how much she can do, it's really good. You know, her alt six second cooldown, great sustain in team fights. Like she. Provides things that no other hero does, and you know sometimes the time is right and sometimes it's not. So we'll always see her come back and then she'll disappear. It's just going to keep happening unless the hero gets fundamentally changed. I believe we will see her picked. I think it'll be very situational. I don't think she'll ever be, unless she gets tweaked again. Uh, meta. I don't I think, think she'll. People, be. I just don't. I don't get it. It was like okay, she loses some health. Yes, like that sucks. And she's, she's obviously so not easy to kill now. But health. Is yeah, hurt. the health is huge, dude. That was a. Massive. Like we were seeing her a decent amount. Like she started to pop a lot in NA before then. Like the auto attack uh, hammer build was just like it chunks, and it was just starting to pick up some steam. Uh, but the health man, it hit her hard. I don't know. Maybe divine shield's the answer. Everyone's playing that now. Dive on the hammer, <laughs> divine shield. <get> it right. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows, right? I'm sorry. I'm just imagining like the divine shield on a siege up siege hammer. I think I would just quit the game. <laughs> <laughs> What do we do? Oh, that would be incredible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last uh, last topic to talk about on this map is Merc Camps. They're quite a few less than you would see on any other map. Just the two Bruiser Camps on the, the far side. That's the only Merc Camps that you can say that are on your side of the map. Then there's, of course, the boss. And only the one set of Giants, like, really far on the bottom of the map. How do you guys feel about that? And how will it affect... And there's not really two heavy, like, Merking type of heroes. I guess the only one would be, like, Illidan. I guess right now it's just like this hero is like particularly good at this um, style of marking. Yeah, it's, about it's that. Very, <laughs> God, Jared. It, it's very similar to Haunted Minds where like you don't go, okay, we're going to get mercs and we're going to push them and win. You know, it's just like we're going to get mercs and then those mercs are going to be annoying and they're going to have to defend to the, react to them and we'll do something else. Um, so like that early game, that's fine. Uh, but then late game, it's like, well, we take those giants, and now there's a single set of giants pushing bottom. Let's do a push with that. Well, it's one set of giants. Can't really yeah. do much. Um, yeah. you know, same with the knights. Like if if you somehow get both sets of knights, which is not an easy task because of the positioning of them. Yeah. You, I mean, it, that's still not even that terrifying. Like how often is two sets of knights mid lane like, oh, like oh, they're gonna win with it. You know, it's like you have to react because it will take a fort or something, but. You know, it's knights aren't, you know, the most, like, two sets of Jaseed Giants are more terrifying than two sets of knights. Uh, and then the boss is the Sky Temple boss, so that's fairly weak as well compared to the normal Grand Golem. So early game, it's fine, but late game, it gets to the point where it's like, well, we can't push them right now because all their ba lanes are pushed. We can't farm gems because they have all of our minions in their base. So let's do mercs, but there's only four camps. So and, you think that feeds you know, into the, the slowness of the late game of the map? I think so, yeah. But I don't think there's anything they could do to change it without buffing those Merc camps. Like, I don't see any way you could design this map to have more Mercs on it without it being, like, dumb. Mm. Okay. Yeah. It just creates this really weird situation where there's, like, these times where you just you don't know what to do because all the lanes are pushed, but there's, it's, you know, all five of them are up, all five of you are up, but you don't want to push too hard because you don't want to be caught, like, in a situation where you have to retreat. But there's no jungle camps to really give yourself like that lane presence in one lane and push another or push that lane. It's just it's just a really weird situation because there's no jungle camps, honestly. But I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it yet. I don't even feel like when we're like, when you go and get mercs, it's not, uh, it just doesn't feel like anything. It's just like up oh, giants are up. Let's take them, and then they do their thing until they're cleared. Like. I don't know, Mercs do not feel very impactful on this map. Almost like the boss is the only one that like whenever yeah. you take it, you're like, you can make an advantage out of this. But any other camps, like take knights just to take them. You know, take giants just to take them. There's no tactical thing you can do with them besides taking them. Like very rarely like we have knights, let's push with them as five. Um, that, that's like really the best thing you can do. But there's nothing fun about that, you know, it's just like it's it's there. Yeah, knights have felt pretty weak for a long time now. Like usually knights are just like, I don't know, they're like they lose Power some ammo. Water. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like they lose some ammo, and we don't have to defend our fort for thirty seconds. Uh, 
So, and the the only time giants are good is when they're left alone on their own, like in Garden, when it's like, oh, there's giants all the way down there. Or in Curse Hollow, like, the tribute's over here, but they got giants all the way up there. And the map's so small, it's so easy to respond to the giants. They just, yeah. like, walk right into the lane, right in practically the middle of everything, and you just kill them. And, it, like, so like I said, it's only two of them. Like, you can't turn it into a big, heavy push. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the boss is, like, the main way to get an edge. The only thing you can do with the knights is... Uh, you know, the turn-in comes and it's winding up and you're like, okay, we can take the knights, the knights will help kill the mid one and we'll deal with the top or the bottom. But then you go to one and you have to cross the map to go to the other one, so it's still kind of awkward. Yeah. And it telegraphs that you're still doing it and the other team can come kill you there and then they take your knights and your gems or make you lose your gems. <laughs> the other weird thing is if you steal the knights, your or their minion wave will fight the knights and sometimes die there and then you just don't get those three gems from the spiders yep. and that's really annoying when it's like great we took their mercs and we got punished for it that's cool but that's the main problem i have with the map is that when you have an advantage or do something like that there's no benefit for you besides like denying them their knights you know but i think work camps should maybe have a reward like a j small gem reward on them even if it only starts like post 10 minutes or something because i don't want it to be too snowball early game or something but mm -hmm. right now, it just anytime you take mercs, it's just because you have nothing else to do. Yeah, it's like they're pushing their base. What can we take advantage of? Well, I guess we could go get giants. It's a really weird mechanic because, in a lot of ways, uh, the original like something like Blackheart's Bay. The farther ahead you get, the more it punishes you. In this map, the farther ahead you get, the other team can't do much either. Like if because you know. Their gems are spawning behind your gates or something like that, or your gems are spawning behind their gates, and they don't want to go outside their gates if you have like that presence like on all of their lanes or like able to rotate really quickly. So nobody gets gems. I've noticed that happen a couple of times. It's just like, don't go outside the gates because we'll get killed. But they can't get gems. We can't get gems. This is nice. Yeah, yeah it just stalls out for a while. Yeah. yeah it's really slow. Really slow like and that's been, Anyway, it's really weird. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Kubi. I'm satisfied. Kubi. I think we can move on if we have time. Uh, we don't have anything else. Not actually. so much. That's... We could ask some questions. Oh, we have... I will we... refresh the Reddit thread. I don't know that voice. Sorry. Okay, what? Was that your Australian <laughs> accent coming back out again there, buddy? I don't know uh, what that was. I don't even want to defend it. Um, b -b 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 some dude named Furious D is excited to be on the show. Whatever the hell that is. Mr. Oakley, how furious is the D? Oh, that's not an appropriate question. Nope. Not <laughs> I see the new rack question. I'm excited about that. Uh, oh, yeah, let's talk about Anub. The Trick Slayer made a post today um, saying that Anubarak is getting some love soon, um, mainly to the Beatles AI. And I think, at least in the competitive scene, most people agree that that's his biggest flaw right now um, is his Beatles. Like, Kubi, I've heard you go on crazy rants about it, how like suddenly a Beatles are in a fight and they just leave. Like they, just, they just walk yeah, into lane. I'm, I'm, very, I'm very glad scary. you've actually had Beatles even start the fight because I've hit like W, Q, or E or something like that, and all of a sudden the Beatle just goes, Hey, there's a fight going on. Yeah, no, they just leave. They just walk away. Yeah. Like, bah, 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 what's the point of having a trait? Like, ugh, I could go on yeah. for days. <laughs> it is frustrating. I think that it's a quick fix, in my opinion. They should just, you know, like, uh, who has the heroic that's like this right now? What, whatever you target, is it matches. Just give them the Gargant, same coding Gargant, that uh, Gargantuan has that. Yeah. Give them the same coding yeah, that Zerglings has. Yeah, Zerglings, yeah, work Zerglings just fine are better. Okay, yeah. So well, exactly Zergling, like that, yeah. it would be good. <laughs> Except that those, those don't push because they have a short duration. But yeah. yeah, Zerglings will stand still. These things will go to a jungle. Why not just make them like Abathur Locust? Like, isn't that exactly what you want? No, like, they'll fight anything well, near them on their way to the lane. I think Abathur Locust have a huge priority to get to that lane. I feel like they should honestly just get rid of the, the lane mechanic. Just stay around Anubarak attack whatever yeah. he attacks. I think that's okay. And just follow him. Yeah. Okay. I mean, oh, he's yeah. he's like the Beetle Lord. Like, yeah. that's his thing. The Beetle should follow him, not just run off in random directions. When They're you're playing in the mines, do they follow him? Because I know Abathur locusts do. I don't know. It's been a while since I've had an Abathur. If you uh, actually go down with Abathur, you can like spawn locusts and just walk around, and they just follow you. And they should make the beetles like that. Oh, that's interesting. That, but that's that's the only instance I can think of where yeah. Abathur can have that happen. Yeah, they didn't announce any what the specific changes were. Yeah, they didn't say. Or just and if you're if you're still doing a push style, 
beetle build, like you're going to be near the towers anyway. So I think just keeping the beetles within a certain radius of a new brack would be a big benefit. Or just have it target whatever you're targeting. Either of those fixes would be huge mm -hmm. and simple. But that's. I'm scared for what <laughs> we'll beetle uh, beetle 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 boards. <laughs> uh, beetle build is going to look like after this beetle AI fix, though. Because already, like, if you can, if you can somehow manage to like get your beetles to attack the right thing, it's a lot of damage. But that's you know, good luck if you can do that. Yeah. Because you have to like really put yourself in the best position just to get those beetles to attack, and it's like a pinpoint position to actually get those beetles to attack something right. Scooby, have you noticed this? Shut Lately, up. Lately, Kevin Shut has up, been sorry. like fluctuating his tone a lot, oh, okay. like he does when he puns. Yes, and, and he doesn't punt. He's doing it out, uh, in like normal conversation now. He's trying to throw us off, man. <laughs> and he doesn't punt. Uh, that he doesn't just, punt. I've tried to stop him like two or three times. I'm like, uh, oh. I wait. thought he was just yeah. about to punt, and he was just talking. Like he's yeah, like, I thought he was going to make a bug punt. Oh, I'm and, glad yeah, you guys have picked up on this. I've yeah, been doing this quite uh, a bit lately. It has been throwing me off, and I'm upset. I know. <laughs> You know why? Because I, because you know, every single time I was starting to punt, it was just people were just stop. like, oh, stop it. And I'm just. See? But he's gonna do it right there. See? Okay, all right, all right, all right. okay all right. I have fixed it because no. now, now no, I'm nobody's gonna call gonna you know. out and interrupt you every time you're talking. I just want to work it. <laughs> all right, good, good stuff. Good stuff. Yes, I have no more questions. Do you have questions? Uh, we could talk a little bit more about two arc. Well, we've only and... got like nine minutes, so we should might. Let's, yeah, we'll, let's we'll just briefly like go over. Let's briefly go over shoutouts. Yeah, so we'll, we'll let Furious. Brandon, talk. let's 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 talk a little bit about two arc uh, while yeah, you're kind of also talking about your. Uh, <laughs> no one's gonna listen to Kev. They don't listen to me anyway. I just said Diablo is bad on a map. Uh, anyway, hey. Brandon, <laughs> go on. Two arc. Uh, well, um, what do you want to know exactly? Do you want me to just talk about two arc in general? Uh, what's new coming up with the team? Uh, you talked a little bit about your tournament performance with ESL, but maybe you could go into a little bit of that if you have time? Or Okay. Um, yeah, we got third in ESL North America. Uh, had some really close matches with Tempo Storm. Ton of fun playing against them. Uh, we were hoping to play Cloud9 in the finals, but we'll just have to do that season two. Uh, well, yeah, not taking out Tempo we're, Storm in the finals? Gonna try. We're going to try to get to the finals. We'll see who we face there. That We want to be there. How did you feel about your series versus complexity? I thought that was a very entertaining series, back and forth, a lot of strategy switching. and Yeah, that Kerrigan hurt in game two. That was not a lot of fun to experience. Yeah. We just had to, <laughs> just like, <laughs> yeah, we're not ready for that. Let's just, we'll deal with anything else besides that. Just get rid of the Kerrigan. And it was on Dragonshire, so it was your best map. It probably wouldn't have been so bad if we let it through on the other maps, but still, like, you only get five games. If you drop, like, we already lost one match. If we drop another one, it's a big deal. Like, let's just ban it out. Nothing else is that much better. Yeah. Nothing else is that scary. So, uh, yeah, we took Kerrigan away from them, like, after that game. Because, you know, they're really strong on it. Um, that was, it came I mean, down that was a very, like, that, that was a big loss for you guys to hit. And it was, it was cool to see that you guys were still able to rally back and take that series. I thought that was, you know, like kudos to you guys for taking Thank a you. match like that where it's like, okay, who okay. like that <laughs> was all right. <laughs> we got wrecked there. And yeah, you guys we did. still managed to like calm down. Dragonshire is supposed to be one of our good maps too, and to lose on Dragonshire was like ouch. But uh Well the whole season yeah, coming back was impressive. Like yeah, they had a period of time good. where they were really good, but like for like a month or two before ESL started, they were pretty crap and they turned it up. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> um, it's like, is that a compliment or? <laughs> it's like a it's, backhanded I mean, compliment. The backhanded compliment. They I agree that we absolutely about. got better over the course of the season. Oh, there is no question true. about that. Um, that was. Cool. I mean, however good we were before, like, you know, you could say whatever. It was what it was. <laughs> um, but I think we're better now. We're still absolutely. getting better. We're looking forward to season two. Um, you know, we're really excited to play all the teams that are in season two. Goat Gaming, Shot in the Bullets, Vortex, and I will check Taquitos? for the last one. Taquitos, Taquitos Rising, Taquitos. Rising Taquitos. Taquitos. Thank you. Uh, Formerly so we get to play all of them. We didn't get a chance to play Vortex before they were removed last time, um, unfortunately. Great. But, you know, we'll play them this time. Uh, yeah, Season 2 is looking big. Have they announced anything about the prizes? It should be bigger. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I assume it would be bigger, but I... I mean that I know nothing about ESL. Maybe I'm 
holding them to something that's not true. Um, but I mean, we're totally looking forward to it. Uh, we had some roster changes just before season one. Uh, we picked up Trader and Panucci, and we've had, you know, a lot of our success has been from the new roster. They're really strong players. Uh, I'm really yeah. happy to have them on the team. Um, you know, and not to say anything bad about Quibsy and Chubbs, I love those guys, you know. Like, we've been playing together for a long time now, and we feel really comfortable with each other. So, yeah, I just feel like we're in a good spot. Um, we're happy with each other. We're working on new stuff. Uh, recently, we picked up Suki as an analyst for us. Uh, he subs in some of our scrims when one of us can't play, and that's been tremendously helpful. Um, that's cool. That's a cool yeah. position. Uh, I don't think there's any teams right now that have uh, specifically an analyst, or at least uh, publicly have announced that they have someone that's analyzing. <coughs> yeah. uh, coach, yeah. sorry, 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 sorry. Kubi, Kubi, Kubi. Let's put it this way. Let's put it this way. Nobody has a good analyst. Oh, okay. okay. Ooh. That's fair. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, Suki has been great. Um, you know, because you spend all night playing scrims and, like, you just played Heroes for six hours yeah. and, like, you don't want to watch the replays, but you really should if you want to learn everything you can. So to have someone to be like, all right, I looked at it, here's some stuff to work on. You guys did really well with this, you guys did really bad with this. This hero combination you think is good, it's not. You're not winning with it. You know, it's stuff like that. And, like, to go into, to have someone else uh, while we're practicing to be able to look at streams and uh, tournament pods. And just be like, okay, this is something that they've been doing lately. This is what you have to look out for. Uh, you know, let's come up with a plan to draft. And like, just having someone that knows the game so well and is a good player and is willing to, like, there's so much you have to do outside the game to be competitive. Like, it's really, really helpful. So um, that happened just before the finals of ESL season one, and I think we played really well. And I think we're going to continue to play at that level or better. So I'm really well excited. Said, Thank you. All right. Well, we don't have a ton of time, but I just have one last question. You don't have to give specifics, but you know, you guys got third place in ESL. You guys getting any getting any contracts coming through the mail? Huh? Huh? Little announcement, um, open announcement, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, I haven't heard anything, but I'm curious because I think you guys are like the last ones who are doing really well, who haven't gotten picked up yet. You guys waiting for that sweet, sweet TSM money? <laughs> picked up by uh, two R, dummy. <laughs> is two R wait? Is two a thing? <laughs> Yes. Oh, Tuark I thought was... a thing. I are, you, that, are you serious? Yeah, I really didn't. I really didn't know there... Tuark was a thing. Tuark is an esports organization. We <laughs> I are never... a team that picks up play. <laughs> he just... Wow, he dipped. He is... I didn't mean to. I, I was actually a misclick. Oh, okay. I thought he was. <laughs> that was, <laughs> that was, like, that was actually a misclick that time. <laughs> I'm not um... minimizing it though. Yeah, okay. two arc is what we are. Uh, oh, cool. I actually I honestly didn't know if that was just like the name of your team or if that was like an actual gaming organization or anything. Yeah, two arc is the organization. Um, in terms of who's picking us up and who's hopefully going to throw money at us, I can't really talk about that. There are talks. There are talks. That's all I wanted to know. That's that's <laughs> all I can say about it. Cool. We are two arc and. Two arc has stuff in the works. All right. Yeah, I was just curious if like, you guys are going to be going through like any name changes or anything like that because there's been a couple of other. I didn't uh, know we're, we're not, was the thing. There is a name change. We are no longer Tuark Iliad. We are just Tuark or Tuark Gaming. Cool. Yeah, the Iliad is gone. Cool. Rest in peace. Rip. <laughs> All right, let's go through shout-outs. Kubi. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. We have ESL coming up tomorrow and then Friday. And then we have Steve's tournament is going to be on Saturday. And we have Go Four Heroes on Sunday. So... I think I'm going to be casting maybe three of those. I got to work out some information. Follow me on Twitter at the Kubi. I will update you guys on all of that in terms of what I'm going to be casting and on what channels, etc. I'll keep it short. That's it for me. So, yeah, uh, you guys can follow me at Tempo Zoya on Twitter. I am the coach, content producer, and manager for Tempo Storm Series Storm Team. Uh, I do a lot of work personally with the team. I'll be moving into the team house within a month. Um, the team's already all there, so make sure you check that out. Big shout out to our sponsors, Funk, Twitch, Namecheap, and G2A, who make all of this possible. Um, we have a new YouTube channel. Um, we recently uploaded a vlog from KO about the transition to the house, as well as... We have 500 as, followers? Or we're almost there. We're almost, almost. there. Guys, we're at like 490. Can you post the link in the chat? I think that helped you guys last time. But we yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when we ones. get uh, 500, um, we get to actually name the channel. Right now it's like youtube.com slash random letters and numbers but at 500 subs um we get to actually name it and we're almost there so um check out all the videos there lots of like uh, content you can learn from there 
Um, we do a lot of analysis as well as vlog and stuff. Um, I'm going to start streaming as soon as I'm back in the house. Um, right now, I might actually start streaming sooner than that, but we'll see. Um, we are playing an ESL Go for Heroes this Sunday. I will also be casting this Saturday for the Catalyst as well at, or Cataclysm, as well as I will be casting Go for Heroes as well. So just follow me on Twitter for when those streams go live. One of them will be on Unctuous' stream for Saturday, and the other one will be on ZP's stream for Sunday. So just check my tweets for those. Cool. And I think that's it. Rip Jake, you'll be missed. Rip Jake. <laughs> We'll have him Wherever back next hearts. week without my terrible production and hosting. And then, Brandon, can you give your shout-outs real quick? Yes, I can. Um, uh, you can find me on Twitter, at 2 Uh I'm also on Facebook, uh, FuriousD, 2 Gaming. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Um, I just subscribed to Tempo Storm's YouTube channel, so I recommend everyone out, out in chat do that as well. Thanks, bro. Got you. Uh... I don't know. My heart's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Mine um, is too. Ever since teenage years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and you know, like, uh, love the community. Love everything about Heroes. This game is so much fun. It means so much to me. Uh, I'm honored to be playing against you know the best teams in North America. Um, you know, it's just so, it's such a great experience for me. So thank you so much to everyone that plays. Um, and not just the players, but like people in the community uh, who may not be on pro teams, uh, you know, like streamers. Um, you know, I don't want to start naming people because I know I'm going to forget someone and they're going to feel left out. So I'm just going to say in general, you know, thanks to everyone who contributes. Uh, you know, shows like this, Town Hall, uh, so happy that you guys are around and, you know, bring discussion and the hype to the game. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Well, thank you. We appreciate it quite a bit. It's good to have you guys on. Awesome. Great. Happy to be here. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, dude, for coming on. Uh, you've been a great, great guest. Um, thank you. Thanks, guys, for everybody tuning in. This is episode 58. We'll be signing off. We'll be back next week, Wednesday, 9 o'clock Eastern. Have a beautiful night. This is all of us, Town Hall, signing off. Setting off on Town Hall Heroes, episode 58.